Boom. How's everyone doing? It's uh it's a Friday. That's that's always a good thing. It means you survived another week. Um so today Rob is busy. He's got stuff going on. And I got to close the door. One second. Um Specifically, Rob has got um, way too much law stuff. He's got like 62 different documents he's got to get finished today. So I am here to fill in. So apologies in advance. <laughs> but um, hopefully we can make this a little less of a, you know, a little less of, uh, you know, a day. I always find Fridays I'm kind of worn out. Um I know it's supposed to be like, yay, we're done. But I'm always like, oh, my God, it's been such a week. So hopefully everyone is having a good one. Um, I have an update for you guys. I So a bunch of people asked, they said, hey, I want um, pigeon business merch. A lot of people said they want pigeon business merch. And I'm almost certainly going to lose money on pigeon business merch because the uh, the profit margins on these things are not fantastic. But um, I still, because you guys were insisting, said, "All right, we are going to do some some pigeon business." So, um, where is the right? So here is the first design for the pigeon business uh, image. Um, and somebody says, what is that about? Pigeon business is because I was talking about uh, Jeanette, Janet Braun uh, in one of my videos. And um, so this is not, this was not alive. This was one of my videos. Uh, this basically, I said that it's getting hard to tell whether, you know, you've heard the old adage of like when you play chess with a pigeon, it just knocks the pieces over and craps all over the board. I said, it's getting hard to tell if there's a strategy there or if it's just pigeon business. So people said, I want pigeon business shirt. Now, I am going to be also making a second version of this. I've already asked the artist to do another version of this. And the second version is going to have the pigeon with a backpack. Because as we all know, sometimes pigeon business involves a backpack. So that's sort of an update on that. Somebody says he needs a tie. He does not need a tie. Because if he gets a tie, then that's going to be more... <laughs> I got to pay the artist again if I get a, get a tie. So um, we're... He's got a briefcase. He's got the sunglasses. It's uh, it's pigeon business. So somebody says, how about a pigeon business sticker? Hopefully we'll be able to, um, hopefully people can have a variety of options for that. So um, that's sort of our beginning here is we're going to have some pigeon business options. Um, so, <laughs> all right. Um, now, Hopefully everyone's got uh, something to drink, whether it's, um, you know, non-alcoholic or something a little spicier. I've got a rye and ginger because um, it's been a week. Um, let me tell you about my week in just a second. All right. So um, I got a really nasty flu. I brought it back from SHOT Show. And... Um, because of that, I was coughing my lungs out. I've still got a cough. And so now that was, I survived that. I'm getting better. I've still got a cough, but I'm not like feeling as miserable. Mrs. Runkle managed to get my flu. And Mrs. Runkle is having a real rough time. Mrs. Runkle is not sleeping well. She is coughing all through the night. And because Mrs. Runkle is not sleeping well and coughing all through the night, guess who else is also not sleeping well? Um, that's me because she's coughing real loud. And so that's keeping me awake. But I'm also just feeling bad because <laughs> it's like, I brought this back. Mm. Um, 
so hopefully that's going to clear. I hope she's going to be all right, but um, we'll we'll see. Um, she was not having a great time with it, but um, I'm hoping that's going to get a little better. Uh, somebody said, is there any Jeanette Braun on the agenda today? Not today. Uh, there might be for Monday. I do have some Janet Braun uh, video, believe it or not. I've got video of Janet Braun, uh, but it's not edited out right now. It's just kind of in the middle of a hearing. And so I will try to get that cut down. Because the only I only really want to talk in this hearing thing about the bits that are Janet, as opposed to getting into the weeds on all the other stuff. So we'll talk about the Janet Braun um, stuff probably Monday. That is kind of what I'm thinking. But um, we do have some other stuff to discuss. Um, what is it? Is Ruckel going to get the Hawaii Supreme Court decision wrong? Video description seems like he might. I have, we're going to go through it together. So um, I already know that the decision involves the Hawaii Constitution rejecting the Second Amendment and basically saying that it doesn't mean anything. Um, so we'll talk about that. Um, and yeah, the thumbnail was just me trying to put a lay on a, a gun, which was really hard, believe it or not. Um, um, we can also talk a little bit about the Flipper um, the flipper Zero. Um, I guess we'll start with the Flipper Zero. Do people know what the Flipper Zero is? I guess is the first thing. Um, that's sort of our starting point. Do people know what a Flipper Zero is? I'm not seeing a whole lot in chat, but then again, it is like chat is a little delayed. So uh, the Flipper Zero is a little device. And let me see if I can pull up a picture of one here. Um, and it basically just allows you to send and receive a variety of signals. It is a sort of multi-tool thing for... Yeah, let me just pull it up here. Um, this is the Flipper Zero. It's this little thing. Um, and it's got a little, it's got a little dolphin as like a logo. Um, so what does it do? Well, it lets you see, um, see signals around you and possibly send signals. So there's a bunch of different things you can do with it. People have installed little games on it. People have that. But um, a lot of what you can do is like recording signals for things like, I don't know, um, you know, remote control signals, uh, garage door uh, signals, although most home garage door signals won't work on that. Um, we'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, proximity cards. You can save a proximity card and you can uh, restart it. Near field communication, Bluetooth, um, all sorts of things you can do with it so that you can, for instance, um, you know, you could use it to, uh, you know, to save some of those keys on. If you get your hotel key, your hotel, you know, when they give you that little card, you can copy that card to your Flipper Zero and then use the Flipper Zero as your hotel key. It's kind of neat. Now, in Canada, there have been a wave of car thefts. And car thefts are becoming a major political issue here in Canada. So, um, and somebody says, sounds super illegal. It's not. Um, these are just made with consumer parts, right? These are just, and in fact, you can just buy all the stuff for this. Uh, somebody says, change traffic signals. Not really. Uh, we can talk about the traffic signals thing, but we can. Uh, you can't really do much with that. Um, you can copy a credit card chip to it, but you can't actually do it with mu or do much with it in that situation. So because car theft has become a major issue in Canada, 
the government has said that they want to ban the import of the Flipper Zero. Um, now, here's the thing. You can make one of these things for cheaper than the Flipper Zero, um, just out of parts you buy online. Um, these are real easy. Somebody says, what legal reason would one need this flipper for? Well, I already mentioned, you can copy your hotel key to it. You can use it as a, a remote control. You can all sorts of things. But the main use for it is people playing around and like testing security. Uh, the main people who buy this are people who do security research. Now, here's the thing. Anything, there are some places where the Flipper Zero can crack stuff. But anything that the Flipper Zero allows you to break is something that is so weak that it's barely security at all. Uh, being upset that somebody can get into, because like there's some buildings where you might be able to use the Flipper Zero to record the like somebody's uh you know pass to get in and then get in yourself the reason why that works is because the security on those things is terrible right it's just awful um there are some cars that you can potentially break into with a flipper zero it's like four years of cars from like the 1990s because after that, they figured out that the secure, you know, that security is, you know, something you need. The reason why you can't use the Flipper Zero to uh, to steal a car nowadays is that cars use rotating secure or rotating uh, codes. So basically, each time a code is used, it moves on to another code. So if you see somebody use their car key fob to unlock their car, the next time you go to unlock the car, it's a different code than the one that you just recorded. So that's kind of useless now. If they're not doing that, then basically you have the security um, equivalent of securing your car with like a piece of string. So the government has said, basically, we're going to ban the Flipper Zero. Now, there is an exploit that is currently being used in order to uh, steal cars. And it's not the Flipper Zero. What it is, what people are doing, when you see about people using these exploits, is that they are amplifying the signal from your fob if you have one of these cars and basically all sorts of new cars now are built with this fob such that you've got a fob that when you just sit in the car all you have to do is push the start button and the car starts up the way that works is your fob is emitting a low power signal that the car picks up on and the car says okay the fob is in the car. I can start now. So the technique that people are using to steal cars is they go and they get an amplifier. And what the amplifier does is it picks up a signal, a faint signal from your fob, and then it rebroadcasts it at a high, much stronger signal. And so because it's doing that, your car thinks the fob is inside it. So they come up to your door, they scan for a fob in your house, they detect the fob in your house, they amplify that signal, and your car thinks the fob is inside it. So what that means at that point is that they can start your car, and your car then drives away and leaves the signal of the fob. Well... Um, your car is actually designed to not turn off if the signal to the fob is interrupted. The reason why that is, is because if your signal to your fob is interrupted while you're driving, you know, let's say you're on the highway and you, you know, you put your key, like your key gets obstructed. 
They don't want it where your car just suddenly turns off on the highway. That would be bad, right? So, um, they drive your car to another location. And once they're there, like they load it into a shipping container and they, uh, they send it off. That is, you know, that's that attack. Now people are saying, how do you secure the fob in your house to prevent that? Well, you can keep the co the fob in a container that blocks the signals, like a metal container, a Faraday bag, um, these kinds of things. But also, they could just design the cars with better security. The problem is, is that they're pushing out these cars with incredible security, you know, flaws and failures. And and I will note, like BMW, from what I understand. Uh, the BMW has um, as a feature in their fobs that if it's not moving for a certain amount of time, then the fob actually um, uh, stops transmitting, right? So you just go and you put the fob, like you set the fob down and it stops transmitting. But if you just keep it in your pocket and you were moving around the house, then it's going to get detected. None of this involves the flipper zero the flipper zero doesn't have this feature so how do people build these things well they buy very simple consumer electronics and they make them right this is something that is not difficult to assemble out of parts that you can buy at any electronics store and you're not going to stop people from buying parts unless you want to ban people from playing with electronics, which is going to have like huge nasty consequences. The solution to all of this is just better security on the part of the car manufacturers. But instead, they're going to ban this, you know, this entirely harmless device. And it's idiotic. It just reveals a government that is um, that either doesn't know what the hell they're doing with any of this, or doesn't care about actually having a good solution and is just like, we did something, this is something, you know, it's just, and this is not going to stop it. It's not going to slow it down. Somebody says electronic store like Radio Shack or Fry's. Yeah, um, I don't think Radio Shack sells a whole lot of this stuff anymore, but like any sort of elect consumer parts kind of store, like the way Radio Shack used to be. All right, so now we can talk about the, um, and somebody's saying, is Rob okay? Rob is fine. Rob is just super busy. Um, we've got Mary Coppola saying, love Ian, but always miss Rob. Sorry, not sorry. Let's go, Ian. Um, I miss Rob, too, when he's not around on a Friday. It, it just is what it is, right? Because, uh, but yeah, Radio Shack doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, but there's other places that sell parts and, you know, whatever else. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so people were asking about the mandatory minimums. Um, and why would the court strike down Polly Evers' third three year mandatory minimum? So, one of the things uh, Pierre Polly Ever was suggesting, and I think this is stupid, and because it's stupid, the liberal government has also thought that they want to uh, pick it up. So, um, Basically, he suggested a three-year mandatory minimum on a third um, on a third offense of car theft. So, if you steal three cars, then you get a mandatory minimum of three years. And um, I don't think that's going to hold up, even though it's three car thefts. And the reason why is because you got to think mandatory minimums. The problem with mandatory minimums is that they um, they always affect the people who otherwise would get the le like would get a lower sentence than that. And so the circumstance you're gonna see is something like a guy with FASD um, who's brought along to be like the lookout as some other guys steal cars and you know has very little involvement, isn't really getting a cut of anything is just coming along because he's got FASD and there's people who are, you know, willing to hang out with him. Um, I think that's going to be the problem. 
So the Supreme Court applies a principle, and this is from a case called uh, the Queen as it was and Nur. Um, three car thefts could be one evening, dude. It could all be one evening. Like that could happen in the same day if they, uh, you know, if they <laughs> in. So, yeah. Um, and all it would take is just the government choosing to, uh, you know, put it as a different sentence. Um, so, yeah, and this is what it'll be is, you know, this will be sort of a reasonable hypothetical is some kid whose gang affiliated cousin dragged them along a lot of the time. Um, that's going to be the situation there. Kurt, you can think that I can tell you the Supreme Court is not going to agree. Uh, the Supreme Court will not agree with that. Um, that's just how our Canadian Supreme Court works. They go with the reasonable hypothetical, which basically means any time there's a hypo, like you can imagine a hypothetical scenario of an injustice caused by a mandatory minimum, the court will throw it out. So Polyevra has also suggested a mandatory minimum for extortion crimes. And I can tell you that one is not going to hold up because extortion is all sorts of issues. Extortion can cover, um, people often get charged for um, extortion in situations where like somebody owes a drug debt and you get like six, um, you get like six gangsters who kick down a door, duct tape somebody to a chair and torture them and really, really hurt them in order to force them to turn up mu like to turn over money in order to um you know in order to uh satisfy the debt here in canada we just recently had a case and i apologize this is gonna be uh somebody saying what is fasd fetal alcohol spectrum disorder um so their parents drank during pregnancy it caused brain damage um so uh, we just had a case, and I apologize, this one is a little rough. I'm going to sort of soft pedal as much as I can. But a woman who was um, believed by a gang to be doing stuff they disagreed with, uh, they held her for several days. Uh, they gave her the choice of they would either cut out her tongue or a finger, and they ended up cutting a finger off. Uh, they also then made her cut part of her tongue off anyway. And um, so they really messed her up, right? Um, that was really a, um, like a horrific situation. This is often what you'll see with extortion. And those extortion things will get you like, you know, a decade in jail. Um but extortion goes all the way down to any sort of threat to reveal something or to do something in order to gain an advantage. Any sort of unlawful threat, because it doesn't include, for instance, uh, sending a demand letter. But um, I had a client who was charged with extortion, like, and it probably fit within the law that uh here was the situation the guy gets fired from work and basically says if you don't pay me the money you owe me and they actually did owe him money right they legitimately owed him money um if you don't repay me the money you owe me i will report the safety violations at your workplace which were genuine safety violations like the guy they were genuinely violating the law um and that is technically an extortion what is the mandatory minimum that we should exceed for a guy who is genuinely owed money by his company and says i will report your actual safety violations I mean, yeah, okay, it's a crime, but maybe not like a crime that needs a mandatory minimum on this. Um, so it's it's hard to predict all of this, and um, 
it's just I don't think that a lot of the I don't think mandatory minimums are generally good policy. Um, I think that in general they tend to affect the people who we would otherwise um, who we'd otherwise cut a break. And I mean, my sort of very cynical view is the guy who was owed the money. Maybe they should just pay him the money, right? Like, um, why not just pay the guy his money? Is that so hard? So yeah, all of this is complicated, but that's why, um, that's why that is an issue. Um, Kurt says you could try not extorting people. Um, sure. The problem is, is that lots of people accidentally commit extortion. Um, extortion is a super easy to commit crime that we just don't actually give a shit about usually. Um, because people all the time say this, um, you know, I've seen people who after their, um, you know, after their ex leaves, they say something like, you know, stop talking shit about me online or else I'll tell them about that time you couldn't like, you know, whatever, right? Stop talking shit about me online or else I'll tell them about the time you something, something embarrassing, right? Um, technically extortion, but who the cares, right? This is much more of a fight between, you know, between people. Like, so you just, I'm not a huge fan of extortion uh, things. So, or ex, like a mandatory minimums that are going to cover all of that. So yeah. Um, and I see somebody, where's that comment there? Hello, I found you because of the Janet drama and I've been having a wonderful time. Well, thank you for joining me. I wish I had some Janet drama to save. I mean, I do. I just don't have it ready to go. I found out that um, I found out that uh, that I'd be streaming or that uh, people sort of needed somebody for Friday. Uh, like a, a an hour ago or something or like two hours ago. Um, why would he say these minimums are charter safe? Is there no lawyer at the CPC? Also, is it possible to consult with the Supreme Court when drafting bills? Supreme Court won't help them with drafting. Uh, but uh, the Supreme, you know, it, they can send a reference bill up to the Supreme Court to say like, hey, Supreme Court, here's a bill we think, you know, would it be okay? The thing is, is that I think the CPC, when they are thinking of like, this will be constitutional, is imagining a different circumstance because uh, what they're imagining here is um, they're imagining that uh, <laughs> here we have an extortion example. Read my comment or else I'll unsub. I have been extorted. <laughs> How many how many years in jail for that? So, um, yeah. Uh, I mean, I think that they're envisioning... I think that they could justify the three-year mandatory minimum for the typical car thief. Like somebody who steals a car for profit, gets arrested, gets charged, does time, gets released, steals another car for profit, gets arrested, does time, steals another, like that guy, three years, appropriate. And you'll probably get the three years. However, um, the, you know, the there are circumstances that are not going to fall into that. And that's where it gets challenged. That's where it gets, um, that's where it becomes a problem. So, um this is a good question. Runkle, if there are mandatory minimums, why would anyone plead guilty? Um, sometimes because you don't have a whole lot of options, but mandatory minimums are also a great way to force guilty pleas. Force guilty pleas. Uh, so what happens? Here's how you force a guilty plea with a mandatory minimum. Uh, previously, prior to the NUR case, uh, if you were found with a restricted firearm, i.e. a handgun, with ammunition, 
that you, um, you know, for that gun and you didn't have a license, there was a mandatory minimum that could apply of three years. So what happens? Well, you get somebody who's charged with that and they're facing a three year mandatory minimum. And the prosecution comes to them and says, so you're looking at three years mandatory minimum on this, but we're willing to give you a deal. We'll let you plead out to just having the restricted firearm, just having the handgun with no license, and we'll leave out the ammunition part. Now that takes the mandatory minimum away. And so we'll, we'll ask for three months instead of three years. And the guy's saying, I didn't do it. I, I was innocent. I am, I didn't do it. And, um, you know, but when they're faced with three months instead of three years, they will often say, you know what? I'll take the three months. I will take the three months rather than the three years because who wouldn't, right? You really want to roll that dice on three years. And here's the scenario that where this comes up. Let's say you are leaving a party, right? Who's been at a party where they drank too much? I mean, so you're at a party, you drank too much. You drove to the party. Your car is parked down there, but you're not getting in it. You're not that stupid, right? You're not getting in that car. So um, you go and you say, well, I'm going to call a cab. And one of the people there says, don't call a cab. I know where you live. You're not that far away from me. I will give you a ride home. And you're smashed. And here's this person going, I'm going to give you a ride home. And you go, thank you. That is awesome. So you get in the car with these people you barely know because they're giving you a lift home. I've given people a lift in these circumstances. I have been the guy getting a lift in these circumstances. But you have a really bad um, scenario. This guy gets pulled over. And you're like, okay, well, it's no big deal. He's sober. Um, you know, he's pulled over. Like, it's just going to be a quick stop. Like, he'll get a speeding ticket or whatever. And then the you find out this guy's got a warrant for his arrest. And you go, I didn't know you were, like, you had a warrant. I didn't know you had issues. And they arrest him. And... Then they ask everyone to get out of the car, sit on the sidewalk, and they search the car. And they find a handgun in the, you know, in the trunk or in the glove compartment or under a seat. Everyone in that car is getting charged for that handgun. Every single person in that car is getting charged. Um, similarly, if they find drugs in the back, everyone in that car is getting charged. Every single person. And you might be saying, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm just the guy who got a ride from this guy because I was too drunk at a party. I had a guy who woke up in cells and he calls me and he says, I don't know what's going on. I'm in custody. I drank so much last night. I don't know how I was getting home, but I'm in, I'm in a cell. I think I'm here because I must have been arrested for being drunk in public, but I'm sober now. Can you talk to the cops and tell them I'm sober now and get them to let me out? And so I call the cops and I say, hey, um, I'm here helping this guy out. Um, he seems pretty sober to me. Can he get let out? And the cop says, um, yeah, he's not there because he's drunk. He's there because we found a kilo of heroin in the back seat. And you know how we got into that car? How we, like, when I talked to the other people who were charged, he got into that car because he was so drunk, so drunk, he was passed out. And somebody at the party said, we need to get this guy home. They pulled out his wallet. They checked his address. 
they said, hey, guys, can you take this guy home? And they carried him into a car. The police report noted that he was passed out unconscious. And this guy was scared shitless when he heard what um, what he was looking at. Now, ultimately, I can tell you this guy was not convicted, but he was charged and he was having some uh, some serious issues. Uh, you know, he was just like and people saying that's kidnapping. I mean, they were they were actually trying to do the guy a favor. They were actually just going to take him to his house and put him in his house. Right. So that he would be there. Um, and people saying you call an ambulance, not in the community. This happened in. You don't really call an ambulance. The ambulance isn't going to get there. So, but the cops are like, yeah, no, um, he's charged for the heroin. And it was, um, ultimately we, we got that cleared up. But if the guy was told, Hey, we'll, we'll let you take a plea to this for, you know, some lesser sentence. Um, he might've been in, he might've been inclined to take it. And you got it like this is um, this is the kind of thing that happens. So mandatory minimums prevent me from like because otherwise, you know, you can end up in situations and. You know, people have all sorts of, you know, have all sorts of concerns. This happens to people on self-defense cases all the time. So let's say um, self-defense case. Let's say you um, you're at home. Somebody kicks down your front door. Um, you know, the Afro like the six guys I mentioned who are there for a drug debt, they got the wrong address. They think you live at this house because you just moved in. And the guy who owed all those drug debts just moved out. So. Um, that's the, um, you know, that, you know, somebody kicks down the door, but you happen to be sitting there cleaning your shotgun and you load the shotgun as they kick down the door and they come in, they got handguns, but you have the drop on them. You get a first shot off and you shoot a guy and he dies. You have a really good self-defense case. There's six guys coming in with guns into your house. You live there. There is no, um, there is like, you. there's no indication that you were involved in anything or anything like that, right? So um, this is almost certain to be found after a trial to be a clean shoot, that you are cleared, good to go. But when I say almost certain, I can tell you as a criminal defense lawyer, we've got a 90% chance of winning this and a 10% chance that the jury does something crazy. The problem is, is that if you get that 10% shot that the jury does something crazy, you are looking at a lifetime in jail. So life in prison on that 10% shot. Prosecution comes to you and says, we'll offer you a deal that has you doing two years. Two years. And you might think a guaranteed shot at two years beats a certainty of like, you know, birth beats a risk of never see like never being released again. Right. Um, that 90% shot of acquittal is only 90%. Um, let's say you just have a newborn baby. You've just got a newborn kid. Well, um, you'd see that kid when they were, when they were two, you know, you'd still have a relationship with that kid. If you get life, you're never going to know your, your kid. Like you're just never, that's not going to be something that happens to you. And people saying that sounds like extortion. It certainly does, which is why the extortion laws exclude 
this kind of process. They also exclude things like if I'm a lawyer sending you a letter saying you owe X much, pay us or else, you know, we will sue you. That is not extortion. Why is it not extortion? Because, um, because otherwise our system falls apart. Uh, Chase, I see you. I will try to add chapters. It is, we'll see. Um, I've got a thing that might make it a little easier, but I'm going to try. So, yeah. Um, LC, I do have some stuff I want to talk about, but right now I'm just, we're, I'm answering some questions here as we go. Uh, I am going to be talking about the Hawaii case there. So, um, yeah. All right, so let's uh, cover some super chats and then move on to the Hawaii case. So Marvin uh, CZ says, have fun storming the castle. I'll be on replay crew. Awesome. Uh, Canonical Heat, thank you so much for 20 gifted memberships. Much appreciated. Traveling Science Man says, best healing wishes to Mrs. Runkle. She could use them. She's having a rough time. Uh, Chelsea, thank you for five gifted memberships. Uh, Callista, thank you for five gifted memberships. Fiona W., thank you for 10 gifted memberships. Um, Debbie W says, have you seen the latest defense filing in Delphi? I haven't. Maybe I should see if I can pull that. Um, I will see if I can pull that and we might have a look at it if I can. Um, Keith Duthie, uh, don't forget to do something nice for Mrs. Runkle. Um, uh, right now she's not really up to something nice. Um, right now she's actually kind of, um, She's kind of okay with the fact that I'm streaming right now because she is, um, what is it? Uh, she is hanging out and um, watching shows. Otherwise, I was going to be taking a nap. And the downside to me taking a nap is that the TV is right where that is. So, yeah. Who is the adult supervisor tonight? Um, I guess technically me, but um, yeah. Have I taken Mrs. Runkle to the doctor? I have not. Um, we'll we'll go there and and so forth. So yeah. Uh, a redneck Washington gun rights activist I watched on YouTube compared Hawaii judges defying Supreme Court akin to treason. I don't know if I will say treason. Um, it is pretty funky. Um, so much snark in that Delphi filing. It's the motion against sanctions. I'll try to track it down because, uh, yeah. Um, 20th Century Fox is pinball. Um, yep. Veronica, thank you for the member anniversary chat there. I have or I have questions. Thank you for uh, 10 gifted memberships. Uh, Michael L., why would the court strike down Polly Evers' three-year minimum? We talked about that. Rainman YYC, thank you for the gifted memberships. And... I hope you're getting better. You you don't need to gift memberships, man. You're you're recovering. So thank it's good to see you in the chat, but um I I just hope you get better, man. We're just uh we're all cheering for you. Uh Dr. Nick, can a majority government amend the charter section one? It takes a lot more than a majority government to do that. So um it's a whole big complicated constitutional amending formula. Uh, Mary Coppola, we love you, uh, Ian. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Conservative Party of Canada says they want the OIC powers gone. Possible. If they get a majority and if they can hammer it through the Senate, yes, it is possible. Outside the box, thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Nick, why would he say these minimums are charter safe? Is there no lawyer at the CPC? Uh, we covered this a little bit. I, I just disagree with them. It'll come down to what the mandatory, like the hypothetical is, is... Uh, is what that comes down to. All right. Amanda Walton, thank you for the new membership. Laura Christine, thank you for 10 gifted memberships. Uh, Bop it, pop snacks, give a snuggle to Pora and, uh, Potter and Zora. Um, earlier, I was eating some, uh, uh, some momos, which are little dumplings, and Zora was very cross with me because she did not get, uh, she did not get dumplings. So, um, she is not happy with th with that. Um, so, studying to be a paralegal in Ontario now. Thank you. Awesome. Um, we could talk a little bit about a paralegal running into some trouble here in Alberta. That's on the docket. Amanda Walton, thank you for five gifted memberships. 
Uh, Ginger with a soul. I hope you and the lady feel better very soon. Awesome. Thank you. LC, uh, the queen of Jordan uh, changed so much. Thoughts? So if you're not familiar with Jordan, Jordan is a case that says that um, that basically they have to hear your matter within a reasonable time and they sort of set deadlines and frameworks. Um, and Jordan has been a big deal. There's a bunch of cases that get thrown out because of Jordan. So um, well, Jordan has been a big deal, but... Uh, before Jordan, things were sliding really badly towards um, like trial dates that were getting way further and further out. So I kind of um, I kind of like what Jordan is doing, but I know it's controversial. Uh, Freddie Mercury's cat, please explain the conceded guilt charges in the Montgomery trial. I haven't been following the Montgomery trial. Um, so there's no education on it. Uh, there's a witness with immunity and a defendant who refuses to show up for trial. Well, I owe you this at the very least. Now I'm trying to, I'll try to see if I can. Um, so he's conceding guilt on two charges. So um, now is that, is that a plea deal or is that just um okay so he's just saying in opening uh statements that he's okay so i'll try to explain this a little bit now that i've sort of looked at what's going on so uh from what i can see and i might be wrong i'm just like this is me trying to figure things out as we go um in his opening statements he conceded guilt on a couple of charges rather than everything and the two charges were witness tampering and abuse of a corpse. This is a pretty common scenario. Well, common-ish, right? And what that means is, like, let's say... Let's say the police catch you dumping a body into a cistern or something, right? And so they show up and they're like... So that looks real bad. And you're like, it's not what it looks like. And they're going, you're literally dumping the body. And often what you'll see is that there are situations where, um, like they find a body in the woods and there are, um, there's clear indications of a connection to a particular person to that body. Right. So you might concede hey, I totally did the thing, like I totally did the thing of tampering with evidence or disposing of the body, but I didn't do the other thing of killing the person. And so it's really common that you might admit to the things that you know they can prove, but still argue that you didn't do other things that maybe they can't prove. And maybe you didn't. Um, there have been cases like where a gang member is tasked with disposing of a body, but they didn't actually do the murder. They're just told, hey, here's a corpse. You have to get rid of it. Um, you get situations where there was a case here in Canada where a guy was initially charged with murder because they determined that he disposed of a body. But later, after they did the autopsy, they determined it hadn't actually been a murder. Um, his wife had just died abruptly because she was essentially an addict and she was mixing drugs. Uh, this was pre-fentanyl, but she had mixed alcohol with opiates and it killed her. And so he came home, found her dead, panicked got rid of the body and they were like, Oh, you know, and his defense was, I didn't murder this person. And after they did a full autopsy, they were like, we don't actually think it was a murder. Um, this happens. Right. But yeah. Kurt says accessory after the fact, possibly. Um, but it can be hard to prove all that. And they might not have been charged with accessory after the fact. So you can't get charged with accessory after the fact. Or you can't get 
convicted of accessory after the fact if you weren't charged, you know. So, yeah. Montgomery is accused of second-degree murder, second-degree assault, and something else. Victim was his five-year-old daughter. Yeah, I mean, he might be a lot happier saying, I didn't murder her, but I I did get rid of the body. Um, so, I don't know the full details, but, uh, yeah. that ex I think that it provides an explanation as to why you might run that kind of defense. Uh, Froggy Girl, thank you so much for the membership here. Uh, possible for the government to scrap... Chart, section one of the charter really hard uh will i cover snoop dogg's lawsuit against walmart i'll have to look into it so i can't make promises but it's interesting um snoop dogg is suing walmart why is he suing walmart um snoop dogg walmart what's he suing walmart over a dispute involving cereal now oh. for diabolical sabotage of his cereal I didn't know Snoop Dogg had a wall at a cereal brand. Um, so apparently he's got Brodus Foods. Um, what is his cereal? So they say that they left the product off their shelves and hid it in stock rooms to sabotage their brand. Um, and what is what's the cereal? Why does Snoop Dogg have a cereal? Does the cereal contain marijuana? Um, I have questions. So can do you think anything practical can be done to better incentivize the state to seek actual justice in these sorts of cases, i.e. not charge, rather than to just charge? I would love to see um, some procedures to like apply to have charges thrown out and to have those tossed out. Um, but yeah, we'll have to see. Uh, does Ian have a swoop? I do. I just forget to do the swoops. Um, I forget a lot. So, yes, and Emily will probably cover it in food court because um, she's got a food court sort of thing. Um, Canonical Heat, appreciate the awesome mods. Best wishes to Mrs. Runkle. Thank you so much, Canonical Heat. Uh, Bad Juju, thank you for the gifted membership. And Canonical Heat says, no momos for Zora equals check your shoes before you put them on tomorrow morning. And watch your cables. Zora is Zora's gonna be sweet. She's she'll forgive me. So all right, and I gotta do a swoop here. Um swoop. It's called Snoop Cereal and comes in a few flavors. Huh. You learn something new um every day so now the problem with news articles is that they say hey um you know we will cover like oh hey this one does actually have the uh, lawsuit all right i will add snoop dogs lawsuit to our docket but um we're gonna start with hawaii because um hawaii Kurt says he wants uh, Snoop uh, Snoop cereal. Um, fair. Uh, present share screen. Hawaii. Um, all right. So um, this is State of Hawaii versus Christopher Lee Wilson or L Wilson. I don't know if it's Lee. It's I don't know why I put Lee, but L Wilson. So, um what happens to Mr. Wilson? Mr. Wilson is busted for having a handgun without a permit. And they weren't giving permits to carry handguns. So he then goes and says, "Hey, this violates my second amendment rights to carry a handgun." pursuant to, for instance, Bruin. And the court starts off with some really interesting phrasing. Article 1, Section 17 of the Hawaii Constitution mirrors the Second Amendment to the United States Constitution. We read those words differently than the current United States Supreme Court. We hold that in Hawaii, there is no state constitutional right to carry a firearm in public. Now, the wording in the Hawaii 
constitution is exactly the same as the wording in the uh, as the wording in the second amendment so it's literally the same wording and here's the problem we run into is they say we read these word those words differently than the current united states supreme court the united states supreme court is like those are the people who get to decide what those words mean they have binding authority and yeah it's so the state appeals an order dismissing two place to keep offenses hawaii revised statutes um and so citing new york state rifle and pistol association and bruin or versus bruin bruin is the key case it is bruin and heller have basically overturned a ton of reasoning on this um so Kurt says, well, not exactly. Kurt, you can disagree with me, but I mean, there is argument as to, you know, as to this, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> All right, Kurt, we're talking about constitutional law. I'll send you a link. Give me a second here. Yeah. Why is Twitter being what it's being? All right, I'll send you a link here. So Kurt it has apparently strong opinions. We'll bring him on. Um, so Kurt, or we've got Wilson, believes otherwise. He says that the uh, that these laws... Um, HRS 134.25a, I'm not going to give you the numbers each time, subvert his new constitutional right to protect himself in public by carrying a lethal weapon. Hawaii's place to keep laws violate, and so the place to keep laws basically require you to keep your handgun in very specific locations, like your house and your, um, what was the weird language to it? Uh, I'm trying to remember. Hey, Kurt. What's up? Well, covering Hawaii and Wilson, or Hawaii versus Wilson. Yeah. So I think the uh, thing that a lot of commentators are missing, um, perhaps deliberately, and I'm not blaming you uh, deliberately, but Hawaii's constitution is a matter for the state of Hawaii. And notwithstanding the fact that they have the exact same language, they can interpret that, that language in their constitution any way they want. Um, it's also not unusual for states to have language that is exactly the same, close to, or parallels the federal constitution. And some of the time, even if it's exactly the same, states will interpret it broader than the federal rights. So it can kind of go both ways. So I, I don't, I wouldn't interpret the words that way, but Hawaii is within its rights to interpret the words that way. However, in this case, it does seem like they're making a specific attack on Bruin. They have, they, they're, they're allowed to not like it. They of course have to apply it as far as it goes. Yeah, no, fair enough. Um, so they note that he lacks standing to cons uh, confront the licenses to carry. And the argument is because he made no attempt to obtain a carry license. Yep. Now the problem with that is that at the time, uh, they basically granted zero carry licenses. Correct. And so he didn't make an... Now, Wilson was not um, seeking to... He, he wasn't a guy who set out to oppose this, which is the other problem. Like, a lot of the, the wins that gun activists have been having in, uh, in the U.S. have been people who go to people like the Firearms Policy Coalition and say, how do I run a challenge on this? Mm -hmm. Wilson, on the other hand, um, Wilson was just a guy who was found with a gun. Mm -hmm. 
and wanted to not get in trouble because of course you want to not get in trouble for that. So I boosted my audio. Hopefully that will help people hear me better. Yeah, I, I'm hearing you fine, but um, I know you are. But we yeah. don't know how that's not reflective of what they hear. Yeah, no, that's fair. Um, and so had this guy been intending to run a constitutional challenge, what he would have done would have been to apply for a carry license and get denied and then challenge on that basis. Correct. It is very soft. I can boost it more. I boost it to 200%. Maybe I talk right into the mic. Maybe that'll help. <sighs> All right. So now they don't Bruin snubs federalism principles. Still, the United States Supreme Court does not strip states of all sovereignty to pass traditional police power laws designed to protect people. Um, so Wilson has stel standing to challenge uh, some of the laws, but those laws do not violate his federal constitutional rights. So they are applying the federal constitutional rights here. So it does seem like they're applying or interpreting the same constitutional rights. Am I wrong about that? This seems to be a decision exclusively under the state constitutional rights, as far as I was able to tell. And then they say, and then they hear, and then they say that Bruin doesn't apply in this situation, which I agree it doesn't. Well, they say it doesn't violate his federal constitutional rights. So I don't know. Hmm. Well, I'm going to have to ponder the, this in some they're detail. They're like, right, the right as far as it goes, because Bruin decided. Bruin was all about whether licenses have to be shall issue. That's what Bruin was fundamentally about. Because right. New York had a may issue license, and this guy was not some special. He didn't have some special reason. He's just like, I'm a law-abiding citizen. I'd like it. So Bruin f effectively boils down to yeah, the state is required to issue these on a shall issue basis. But since our friend over here never applied for a license from any state. Then he's not under Bruin. Bruin doesn't read on to him, so Bruin doesn't apply. No, fair enough. Yeah, I haven't, yeah. like, um, I got sort of short notice that I was going to run a stream here. Tonight, no, you're one fine. of the things I was going to do was to go over this case and try to pick it apart. Yeah. So um, I'm kind of going through a lot of this for the first time, which is... You're, you're fine. Yeah, I'm trying not to step on my face, but... Uh, the other one I'm trying not to step on my face over is the um, the Carano lawsuit. Have you read that one, Gina Carano? Uh, is this a new one? Yeah, it just came out recently. She is suing Disney. I thought that happened a while ago. No, she just filed. Uh, real recently. Okay. Uh, I'm she's thinking of something else where someone sued. Wasn't it Disney because their movie wasn't put in theaters because of COVID and there was an issue over pay? Wasn't wasn't that Gina Carano? I'm, I'm, no, I'm Gina Carano. Um, Gina Carano got bounced off of The Mandalorian. Uh huh. And the reason why is because she was getting into a lot of fights on Twitter over uh, COVID and trans issues and uh, other Jansen? stuff. All right. Yeah. Okay. So Elon Musk is paying for Gina Carano to sue Disney. And because he had this pledge about if you get in trouble talking about uh, talking shit on Twitter, I will pay your lot, you know, your legal bills. Mm -hmm. um, and amongst other things, she's suing that she wants to be recast on the Mandalorian and to make them complete um, a series that she was a, potentially going to be in Good and I'm luck. like that, that's not going to happen and you wouldn't want it to happen if you could yeah you want specific performance you want specific performance of a creative work no like chance. no chance <coughs> yeah, like no chance. money is a maybe but the specific performance and the, the other thing is if she actually like if you got that, that would be such a crazy thing because at that point, like if you're cast, Disney would have the full rights as to what what they have your character do. And yeah. so it's like, 
congratulations. Your character is now a pedophile and will, um, you know, like that's going to be the thing about your character. It's like, okay, yeah. if you really want to let them burn your career down. <laughs> I mean, if I was Gina Carano's lawyers and Disney came and said, hey, we will offer you that we will recast you in these things. If that didn't come with like complete creative control as well, I'd be like, you go to hell. Um, you go to hell. So now, now you're thinking. Yeah, now you're thinking. But uh, yeah, that one, I'm trying to piece it out because it involves some like unusual California laws. Yeah. California's got a law against viewpoint discrimination. So I'm like, I need to do research in this. I believe it has a law on not discriminating on the basis of political affiliation. I'm not sure about yeah. viewpoint discrimination specifically. I know that it's... the I know the uh, the um, the uh, political affiliation has been interpreted very narrowly by the California courts, though. That's really what I was trying to figure out, and also the. Um the issues about whether or not she's actually employed because I don't know that a film star is an employee. No, she wouldn't be. She's an independent contractor. Yeah. So does a uh, law saying that it protects employees apply to her at all? Yeah, and if not, not um, if not, I don't think she's going to survive a motion to dismiss. Um, I don't know. A lot of people really like that lawsuit because they are sympathetic to Gina Carano and her position. I'm just trying to figure out, like, when I read it, I just don't see that it's likely to do well. And I'm... No, I tend to I'm agree to you based on the description you gave me. I, I'd like Gina Carano to win, too, for any number of reasons. But I can't affect my my interpretation just because I wish it were so. That's not how this, role, that's not how this works. That's kind of my thinking. It's like, I, I want to find out, like, I want to see if she's actually got a, um, a case on this. Yeah. And yeah, this is the other aspect. Uber drivers are employees in California. Yeah, they did. They, cha yeah. they changed the law specifically because of it. They changed uh, what qualified as an employee uh, because they adopted a specific three-part test uh, by the legislature. So that's true. And I suspect that that three-part test would have been specifically excluding actors because it's California. They're not going to mess with Hollywood. So I don't know. Um, but now we're wandering afield. So back on to Hawaii. So, um, so this is our sort of beginning. We've got flying Hawaiian zip line uh, owner, Dwayne Ting, saw men on his fenced-in property via video surveillance, which he reported to the Maui Police Department. They headed to his property, but Ting, driving an all-terrain vehicle, corralled Wilson and his three companions with an AR-15 assault rifle. Now, an AR-15 is not an assault rifle, but... The, whole, the Hawaii Supreme Court disagrees with you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the good news is that there's no precedential value to a finding of fact. And I don't even know that that's, that's a fair. finding of fact. That's fair. But he rocks out with his AR-15 on, uh, on an ATV and detains them until the police arrive. And this guy tells the police, I have a weapon in my front waistband, which turns out to be a 22 caliber pistol. Um, if you're wondering why he didn't get into a gunfight with the guy with the AR-15... Um, I mean, they're almost exactly the same. It's two two versus two two three. Those are almost exactly the same, right? <laughs> um, they are about the same diameter, but the two two three will do a lot more damage to you. So oh. I wouldn't want to get in that fight either. Okay. Um, and it turns out this pistol was unregistered in Hawaii, and he had not obtained or applied for a permit to own a handgun. He says he bought it in Florida in 2013. Um, I'm wondering how he gets it to Hawaii. Because, like, Hawaii, there's not that many ways to get to Hawaii. You can't just, like, drive over. Um, so, 
So he says basically possessing a firearm for self-defense purposes outside the home violates his rights under the Second Amendment and uh, the Hawaii Constitution. And so he asks for this case to be thrown out. This is a motion to dismiss. Mm -hmm. State says no deal. Um, they say he they presented ATF records to show a, about when and where he purchased the guns. Um, they say that he had not applied for or been issued a concealed weapon or firearms license pursuant to Florida law. And that somebody not named Christopher Wilson purchased the firearm from a licensed firearms dealer in Florida. So was this a straw purchase? Was this a legitimate purchase followed by a legitimate gift? But there's they're making some shade about this. Um, and the ATF is involved in this case, but somehow they didn't find a way to shoot a dog. Hmm. They're slacking. They're slacking. Um, no dogs die in the course of this case. I'm wondering what he brought the 22 pistol for and what he was doing there, right? Cause he's trespassing on somebody else's land with a 22. Like what's he doing? What's he doing? Protect so, from snakes. <laughs> there's a snake in my boot. So, uh, circuit court denies his motion to dismiss relying on young versus Hawaii. And they say that the Second Amendment does not provide a right to openly carry a firearm for self-defense. And so then uh, that judgment was vacated, and now it comes up to... Um, so he files a second motion to dismiss after Bruin comes out. He says, Bruin's come out. I need another shot at this. Mm -hmm. You guys are wrong. Bruin. Mm -hmm. And you've already pointed out the... Um, the Bruin issue. Somebody says there's no snakes in Hawaii. I, okay. If that's true, then I, I am surprised if there are in fact no snakes. I mean, okay. I didn't know there's no snakes in Hawaii. Hawaii is a beautiful, um, I've been to Hawaii once. It is beautiful. Um, now I stayed apparently on the bad side of the big Island mm -hmm. and the bad side of the big Island was beautiful. Cause I stayed on the, um, like they talk about the green side and the other side, basically. Mm. And I stayed on the, um, you know, the side that's like a lot of volcanic rock and so forth. Mm. Um, it was beautiful. Um, the other thing that was really amazing was I was staying on. Um, so we we rented somebody's like apartment while we were there. And there was this place that was right nearby that was. Um, Da Poke Shack was what it was called. Like literally Da Poke Shack. Um, and if you guys run Da Poke Shack, um, I, I ate so much of your stuff. <laughs> if one of you in, um, so it was, it was so good. I, I ate like a, an absolute pig. It was amazing. Um, Why does have pigs that I know. So he says the place to keep laws violate his right to carry a handgun for self-defense outside of his home. Both the United States and Hawaii constitutions confer that right. That's his argument as opposed to their finding because they're going to find that no, they don't. Um, so he describes these absolute... So Hawaii says that you're only allowed to carry the firearms and ammunition in your place of business, residence, or sojourn. What is a place of sojourn? I always thought the word sojourn meant to travel or it's like to move between place and place. Isn't that a sojourn? Yeah. I'm just like to reside temporarily to dwell for a time. Oh, like a hotel. Oh, okay. I guess Fine. like a hotel or okay. like a campsite or, um, yeah. Okay. okay I've, fair I've, enough. I always, I always used a verb. I didn't know it was a noun. Okay, interesting. Neither cool. did I. Um, like, I've, I've heard of, like, you know, people name their boats Sojourner or, or that kind of yeah, thing, but yeah. exactly. Um, so, first, the Second Amendment allows for some restrictions per Heller and Bruin. For instance, registration and permitting are constitutional. 
that is going to be the end of this one for him. Pretty much, yeah. That's the end of the game. Second, unlike the Bruin plaintiffs, Wilson illegally possessed a handgun because he never tried to follow Hawaii's firearm registration and license to carry law. Because he didn't apply for a permit, he lacks standing to raise a Second Amendment challenge. Yeah. So, which, is, <laughs> which, is, which is also interesting because I was telling my chat about this earlier today. Because uh, before Heller was called Heller, it was called Palmer. Uh, Palmer yeah. was going to be the lead plaintiff. He was uh, a gay person, and he was much more sociable and personable. And they want him to be the face of it because it was a lot better. But Heller was the only one of the group who had actually applied for a permit. Now, remember, <laughs> this is the time when D.C. was no issue. <coughs> he was the only one who had actually applied for a permit and got it in denial. And therefore, he's the only one who had standing. So Palmer became Heller. And that's how that came to be. So, yeah, because they didn't apply, he is no standing. Yeah, that makes sense. Yep. And um, remember how we covered that crazy decision um, with the guy who put his LSAT in the filings? I do remember that. Um, that crazy decision, that guy got tossed for standing. Standing gets a ton of these things tossed. Mm -hmm. You have to... And if you want to challenge a decision, you often have to go through the appropriate steps. Like um, when they were challenging like some of the gay marriage decisions, you got to go in and you actually have to try to get married. You can't just be like, I am a person who would want to get married if this was allowed. You have to actually go in and try and they and you have to get the no. It's the no that you're challenging, not the potential of a no. If right. that makes sense. Um, so. Oh. All right. Let me know if I'm too loud now, Chad. I might be way too loud. You are a little spicy now. Okay. Um, I figured out a way to make myself louder. All right. And I promised Truffle Hound that I would only mod him temporarily. So I am demodding him. People in chat, if you see me demodding here, if you see Truffle Hound demodded, it is literally because he basically said, I will mod for one day only. And then I totally betrayed him okay. by not demodding him sooner. Yeah. I just want to make sure that I was being responsive enough to the chat. Lol. <laughs> so the court ruled he had standing and then it concluded that per Bruin that, um, that his right for self-defense extends outside the home. Okay, cool. Um, Circuit Court made no exceptions for carrying firearms outside of the home for uh, self-defense purposes. Um, and then brackets, there are exceptions in those laws, except as provided in sections 134, 135 to 134 uh, sub 9. But this mistake is immaterial. I'm guessing those exceptions are for people with a permit. So court dismissed one and two with prejudice. State moves to reconsider. All of this is fun procedural stuff. Um, Attorney General argued that Bruin does not stop states from requiring a license to before bringing a court to a public place. So, um, what I'm seeing from all of this is that we're going to see some group like the Firearm uh, Policy Co Coalition mm -hmm. is going to bring a suit. Like, Hawaii is going to be a battleground over this, right? Somebody's going to bring a suit. It's not going to be Wilson. But it's mm. going to be they're going to get some Hawaiian to um, to apply for a permit. Sure. Uh, and they're going to say, I'm a law abiding citizen. I just want to um, I want to carry a gun to defend myself against, um, you know, um, I don't know, pigs. Pigs, a criminals. Against a, a 22 LR against a pig does not sound like a recipe for success. Does Hawaii have like toxic fish? Are there dangerous fish out there? Maybe you could defend yourself against a dangerous fish. Are the toxic fish also bees? I mean, it is in the nice circuit. Who knows? <laughs> so to defend yourself against bee fish is a 22 caliber sufficient. Um, people are saying no toxic fish in Hawaii. Okay. Um, Hawaii, by the way, is where I decided I really enjoyed um, I really enjoyed snorkeling in Hawaii. 
Uh, people say sharks. Yeah, I mean, I feel like a 22 might not be enough for a shark. Some toxic snails, barracuda. Um, barracuda, maybe. Wild chickens. Um, okay. So, um, basically, they say that uh, they don't violate his right to keep and bear arms, and he lacks standing to challenge the... Um, he lacks standing to challenge the the aspects of with a license or with a carry permit. So, all right. Um, so he didn't bother to apply for a carry license and satisfy HRS one thirty four sub nine. So we can't attack the licensing law. Mm -hmm. I'm sympathetic to the argument that he didn't do it because he knew it would be impossible. Yeah, but, you, gotta try, you gotta try anyway. You gotta try anyway. I mean, this is not the ideal case for um, for a challenge. They need to get somebody to bring an actual proper yeah. challenge to this. So, they could not bring Bruin-based constitutional challenges because of that. Um, right. No, the more I read in this, the less... I mean, there's parts of this that I'm just going to hate anyway. Um, I don't like but, it as a statement of law. I mean, I'm not a happy camper, but they're well within their legal bounds to write this. Yep, absolutely. The Supreme Court needs to get off its butt and do more Second Amendment cases so we don't have to have so many problems. I mean, what the Supreme Court should do is take this case up and say, mm. um, we think Bruin says you don't even need a license. Um, yeah, I don't. I, I don't think this is a good vehicle for that argument. <laughs> yeah, I mean the problem is, is Wilson is probably, and I don't know the guy, but he's probably a shithead. Mm. He's trespassing on somebody else's property with a gun. That doesn't seem like he's. Um, doesn't seem like he's our lead, like our ideal candidate for um, for something like this. Um, so he says it may be unconstitutional and it's unreasonable to require defendants to apply for licenses, uh, to pursuant to a potentially unconstitutional statute. Um, so he says that because it's unconstitutional, he should not have to apply for a license to challenge the law. But they say, if you want to make that argument, you got to apply for the license. Yep. Cool. Um, and he wasn't charged with that section. So they say you can't challenge it because... He was charged with a different subsection. Okay, that that too. Standard standing problems, and I hate standing as a principle, right? Um. So, I I hate standing as a principle, but it is what it is. Um. So, um, because he didn't bother to follow HRS's uh, procedure to obtain a license to carry. I mean, he would, he would have been grant. He would not have been granted it at all, but he didn't try. Um, now where's the phrase that just, um, there's the whole principle of Aloha thing. And I got some thoughts about that, but I want to like read it in context. Um, so let's find Aloha. I didn't read that far in the opinion. Oh, there's Aloha Spirit. And Hawaii, so, the Aloha Spirit inspires constitutional interpretation. Okay, that's a new one for me. I did I did not learn the Aloha Spirit method of constitutional interpretation in school. I am deprived. Now, I do not necessarily know... Um, I don't know Aloha very well. Um... But, like, this to me seems like a religious idea. You know, they note that, um, what is it, uh, may contemplate and reside with the life force and give consideration to the Aloha spirit, um, which they say the spirit of Aloha clashes with a federally mandated lifestyle that lets citizens walk around with deadly weapons during day to day activities. Um, so I'm going. I don't like that at all. Um, I'm sorry. And the, I feel well, like the splintered paddle. I'm sorry. I, I read ahead. 
What? There's a there in the Kauai Constitution. It mentions a splintered paddle. Okay. So from what I understand, um, and I know very little about this. Apparently, somebody tried to attack a notable figure in Hawaiian history with a paddle. Uh -huh. And so the broken paddle is a symbol of, of that. Uh -huh. um, I feel like the Hawaii bar has got to be a really interesting thing if you've got to apply aloha spirit to things, though. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So... Yeah, I mean, this is a case I'm going to have to pick apart in some detail to go through and talk about why this happens and what's going on. But the standing problem is an issue. Um, so Hawaii prohibited the public carry of lethal weapons from 1833 to 1896. Um, unlicensed public carry of firearms has been illegal from 1896 to the present. I think this one is kind of interesting when you compare it with the um, the recent decision that found that the Second Amendment in Hawaii meant that you could own a, like a, a butterfly knife. So um, that I think is kind of interesting. So it'll be interesting to see how this all um, shakes out. But I suspect what we're going to see as a result of this is there's going to be um, there's going to be a challenge brought to this specifically to the licensing aspect. Somebody's going to go and apply for a license, um, get denied, and then um, then uh, you know, and is then going to challenge it. And that'll be where that uh, gets a little more interesting, at least in terms of you know them hearing this issue. Um, Hawaii's a weird place, but... Um, I can't transfer my bar scores to Hawaii, so if I want to get licensed in Hawaii and sue people, I'm going to have to actually fly there and take the bar exam. So are you going to do yeah. it? I don't know, maybe. They need some Second Amendment lawyers, I guess. You could go to Hawaii and just be like, hey, I'm... Uh, what is it? Uh, I mean, there's worse places to study for a bar exam. I'm just going to say. Um, so law of splintered paddle, um, they've got some text on that. Okay. Can we scroll up so that I can see the entire, okay. Uh, the law of the, spl I'm going to butcher this pronunciation. This will be hilarious. I'm sure the law of the splintered paddle promotes public safety. Ina kan Kanaka. Imalama oka iki aku aim lam oi i kanaka doing. I'm not even close. I'm gonna stop butchering this thing. Yeah, no. Somebody, somebody Hawaiian is going to send us hate mail here. So the English is, "Oh my people, honor thy God, respect alike the rights of men, great and humble." See to it that our aged, our women, and our children lie down to sleep by the roadside without fear of harm. Disobey and die. Okay. Huh. So, now this I think is interesting. So they note Kamahamaha's the first laws protects all people, great and humble, especially the vulnerable, children and the elderly. The law imagines free movement without fear, living without uh, need to carry a deadly weapon for self-defense. Here's the thing, though. Um, carrying a firearm actually tends to, you know, when we say like, oh, you've got a, a right to defend yourself against attack, um, an elderly person is not going to be necessarily able to defend against I don't know, me, and I am not, I am not scary, right? I am not the scariest guy, but I'm pretty sure I could beat up an 80 year old. Right? Probably yeah. most of them. Um, and I see Kamehameha is the pronunciation. Okay. I'm, I'm butchering things myself. Kamehameha. Uh, 
Sounds Japanese, which maybe it is. Or maybe so. It's but how do you keep me from beating up an 80 year old? Well, I mean, I just don't feel like it, but let's imagine I did. Um, if you give that 80 year old a handgun, then I'm a lot less likely to be able to beat them up. So I don't know. I, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of things in this that they uh, specifically seem to be rejecting, like the Supreme Court's decisions. Um, lethal weapons share little resemblance to weaponry used centuries ago. A well-trained Revolutionary War soldier could fire his brown best musket three times a minute. Um, and then they note, um, presently a semi-automatic rifle can fire at least 45 rounds a minute and up to 300. Um Weapons to maximize death differ from those in the eras Bruin tells us to review. And Bruin has specific opinions on that, which is tough. So they basically say they, I mean, they really are rejecting Bruin pretty hard here. Ah. Yeah, they're not, they're not fans of the Bruin. But I mean, Bruin should be binding law, no? Oh, it is, but they're going to complain about it for a while. Yeah, I mean, it seems like they're just saying we're not going to apply it either. So, Well, as to that much, they don't have a choice, but they can certainly complain about it. Yeah. Um, it'll be interesting when they bring a case that is squarely within Bruin as to which mm. one wins here. So, yeah. Um, well... I think that's um, enough of that one for now. Um, let's talk about something funnier. Okay. And by funnier, I mean like a little bit of chaos. Uh, present, share screen. I Did remember you see, this, uh, this case? case. I remember this case. So yes. there's our texting judge there, captured she on to, screen. She tried to move the camera. She tried to block the camera with some cardboard or something so that they couldn't see her text. Yeah, I remember this case. Yep, and I'm being told I need to swoop. So, swoop. Um, And somebody requested this swoop because of... Uh, uh, because, uh, what is it, uh, Pixie's out of, uh, out of hospital. So we'll do this as a swoop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, somebody in the chat pointed out, if you look at what she's doing on the phone, I'm going to see if I can zoom in. Uh, it won't let me zoom the picture in any larger. Um, that's not a text. No, it doesn't look like it. That looks like she's on, like, YouTube or something. Like, mm, maybe a thumbnail. Maybe. So... Yeah, but she has come to a deal. She's made an agreement. Um, and the agreement is that she is going to step down as a judge. And she's not going to seek judicial office again in Oklahoma. Ever. Hmm. So it's kind of a good ruling, I think. It's kind of a good ending. Because I don't think she ought to be a judge. Um, 
Now, I mean, the one thing I thought was really weird on this one is that she, uh, what is it? Uh, she was describing the defense attorney as awesome and mocking the prosecution, like the prosecutor. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, how often does that happen? Like when you hear of a judge doing um, shady stuff, yeah, they almost always are shady stuff against the defense. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, she apparently sent 500 texts or, or more. And, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's awkward. Um, people are asking, is she still going to be a lawyer? Yes. She is going to go back into the practice of law. Now I can tell you if she can't stay off the texting, um, would you want to hire a lawyer who, Maybe can't stay off the texting. It certainly give me some reservations. Yep. Um, and uh, so we'll uh, cover some super chats here. Michelle Curls has got my 91 year old dad home from hospital yesterday. COVID and dementia. Ooh, I'm sorry. He's happy and healing. His name is Marvin. Having a shot to celebrate. Cheers. Um, cheers to Marvin. I. I got to have something here I can celebrate with. I mean, I think it's good she's not a judge anymore. That yeah. um, That is appropriate to me. Um, if she'd gone through with the hearing, I think that they would have probably imposed additional penalties. Uh, probably she would have ended up owing a bunch of money. So um, that saves her a bunch of money. So, But uh, cheers to Marvin. Uh, Pant says, Ian, you got the explanation right. His defense is that his wife did the bad and he helped cover for her. She's the key witness. Her story is he did the bad and she covered, albeit this trial in real life. I was watching Ooh. some of that tes testimony earlier today with the the wife and uh, she is she's messed up too. She's She lied to the grand jury and she's on trial for perjury. So, and her own testimony just doesn't strike me as particularly credible and sort of how this thing went down. I, it's like she, she tells a story that makes, you know, the, the father, you know, the really the bad guy. And she's just sort of to the degree she's helping. It's because she's cowering in fear and scared. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not buying this story that you're laying down. I mean, if I'm the defense lawyer, I love that the chief accuser is facing perjury charges. Like, they, they mentioned it a couple of times. Yeah. I, I yeah. would probably be like every other phrase would be like perjury, perjury, perjury. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I, that does not surprise me that they're mentioning it. Um, Kung Hei Fat Choi, everyone. Thank you, Truffle Hound, who has now been demodded at his request. He says, chat, I don't like buttons. I was given buttons for the 24-hour stream, which you were awesome in, but button responsibility is a lot. Nope, that is fine. Uh, Boppet says, texting judge is stepping down. Thoughts? Good. Um, and they didn't just let her step down. They also got her to agree to never seek to be a judge again, which is the right thing. Um, the friendly CC says, adult supervision videos are great. Thanks. Um, Hawaii has, Tracy Fagan says, Hawaii is wild pigs that destroy everything. Um, Gains the Tide says, don't forget to like. Thank you. And Nicholas Staros is soon in a car for a four-hour ride to a three-hour meeting. Um, I've done that. <laughs> um, I had to do a four-hour drive to a um, to a town called Fort McMurray, which if you're in Alberta or in Canada, you probably know where Fort McMurray is, but it's an oil town. It's a ways away from Edmonton. I drove up there, uh, stayed at a... Um, Stayed overnight in a hotel, walked into, um, you know, walked into the courtroom and the prosecutor says, oh, uh, did we not send you an email? And I'm like, no, why? And they're like, yeah, we're with just withdrawing these charges. You don't actually need to be here. And I was like, oh, cool. And then four hours back to uh, 
back to Edmonton. So that I was not pleased. Um, somebody also asked about the nuclear beans. This is one of my nuclear beans. What makes them nuclear? If they're spicy? Um, that is a Carolina Reaper floating at the bottom. Okay. So that uh, no, that noted. is um, being sick tends to kill my spice tolerance. And um, what is it? Uh, it's recovering now, but. Uh, the nuclear beans are really enjoyable right now because they're pickled beans with uh, with a lot of sort of spice to them. In my experience, Fort McMurray is where BC boys go to get a Coke addiction. Not just BC boys. Um, also, you get um, like people from the East Coast. There's a lot of East Coasters out there like Newfoundland and Nova Scotia and so forth. And um, <coughs> a lot of cocaine. Um, this is actually an interesting aspect of drug policy because they do drug testing at the, uh, the rigs, mm -hmm. but cocaine clears your system and can't be detected really quickly. Mm -hmm. So a lot of them do cocaine. And if they get told, Hey, you got to get drug tested, they'll just like run away into the woods for six hours. Whereas marijuana can be detected for like 30 days out. And so um, not a lot of weed use up there. Everybody quits weed to take up cocaine. And um, yeah. Pretty funny. It's pretty funny. <coughs> Unintended consequences. Yep. Um, why so much cocaine? Seems like it's hard to get up there. It really isn't. There's a, a ton of it um, there. Uh, thanks for being respectfully and good word try, Kurt. Um so good try on the words, but um, I don't think we we got anywhere near <laughs> near that. Um, so people wanted to look at Snoop Dogg. I don't know anything about the Snoop Dogg lawsuit. So this would be a blind read, but um, I'm not quite out of gas yet. Um, let's have a look at Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg is apparently suing over cereal. And we got a Mbiggin. S N double O P D O double G Z. D O double G Z. D O double G Z. I do not know the song. <laughs> What's my name part two, baby? So they got uh, Brodus Foods, the LLC is the plaintiff, not Snoop Dogg. And the reason why is because, of course, he incorporates. Why would you incorporate a food company? Oh, and people are telling me I got a swoop. Uh, we'll do a Kurt swoop. Uh, where's the Kurt swoop? Kurt swoop. Um, why would you incorporate a food company? Because, of course, a food company is uh, a thing you definitely want to in incorporate because... Um, Somebody eats your stuff and dies, you don't want to face that lawsuit personally. So, he's suing post-consumer brands, post-foods, and Walmart. And it begins with my favorite turn of phrase, comes now. Yeah, I could do without that. I I, I hate I hate that phrasing. Um, if I win a lottery, I am going to create a porno that will be called Comes Now, and it will be a legal-themed porno. And the entire purpose of the existence of this porno will be to make it difficult for every court to, to tolerate the phrase Comes Now. I will release this as a gesture of goodwill to the world, and every courtroom will be sitting there going, What the... <laughs> Like, we'll just send this out. We'll make it as cringeworthy as is possible to be so that it can be um, so that it can be sort of a viral thing. And you know what? We'll throw it into the public domain. Anybody can make, you know, can uh, make a copy of the 
comes now. Well, video. how am I going to get my cut? <clears throat> well, that's the thing is if you won the lottery here, we're not worried about cuts. So, also, um, can B fish be in the porno? Hmm. No, that probably runs afoul of certain laws. <laughs> I think both bees and fish would run afoul of certain laws for that. Um, but summary of the complaint. In 2022, Calvin Brodus, popularly known as Snoop Dogg. Don't say that, Ian. I'm a great actor. I know how to do all the right things. <laughs> it's not an acting problem. It's a animal's problem. <laughs> uh, so Snoop Dogg and Percy Miller, popularly known as Master P. No kidding you'd go by Master P if you were known as Percy Miller. Percy is the kind of name you pretty much got to become a great rapper to deal with to avoid getting, like, beaten up in high school. Um, had a vision to create a family-owned company that would add diversity to the food industry while inspiring and creating opportunities for minority-owned food products and brands. The company was to be a legacy for Snoop Dogg and Master P's family that they could help, uh, or that they could leave to help them create a brighter future. Um, okay, this is a little overwrought, just say we wanted to diversify out of music to create a company that might continue to do stuff after, like, you die. Uh, this dream resulted in Snoop Dogg and Percy Miller starting Brodus Foods. Brodus Foods' two main brands are Snoop Cereal and Mama Snoop, which provide high-quality, affordable breakfast foods. Upon its inception, Brodus Foods became one of the few high-profile minority-owned businesses within the food industry. I've never heard of it, but... Um, maybe they don't ship to Canada. Um, so in addition to inspiring minorities to seek uh, economic empowerment, how many times are they going to hammer on that? Like, does this actually, in are they making an allegation that this was held back for racism reasons? Um, okay. Um, so, uh, Brodus Foods gives back to society by creating food that is affordable for all families and donating a portion of the proceeds to several charities with the goal of ending hunger and homelessness within their communities. Okay, that's pretty cool. To further their dream, Snoop Dogg and Master P approach Breakfast Juggernaut Post to enter into an agreement to help get Snoop cereal on retail floors. Post initially tried to buy Snoop cereal outright, but, Matt, but Snoop Dogg and Master P believe that selling the brand would destroy the whole purpose of leaving the company to their families as a legacy. So now I'm getting to a motivation here. Why would Post want to suppress the cereal? Because they wanted to buy it, and if they couldn't buy it, they'd squish it and then maybe buy it on the cheap later. Okay, I'm getting That's a theme right. here. Like, this makes, like, yeah... Post pretended to be on board with Snoop Dogg and Master P's goals and dreams and agreed up on a partnership and promotion agreement, the agreement, whereby they would split the profits with Brodus Foods. In return, Post agreed to treat Snoop cereal as one of its own brands and produce and distribute the cereal to the major retailers, including Walmart, Target, Kroger, and Amazon. Because the largest seller of Post products is Walmart, Snoop cereal should have been placed on Walmart shelves right next to the dozens of other Post branded cereal. Makes sense so far. I'm with you. Unbeknownst to Brodus Foods, Post was not on board with their goals and dreams and had no intention of treating Snoop Cereal equally as its own brands. Now, I'm guessing that a lot of this they're going to want to try to get out of Discovery. Because if they get Discovery, then they're going to get all the internal Post emails about what they actually thought about what they wanted to do about this cereal. Um... Instead, Post intended only to give appearances that they were following the agreement, when in reality, Post ensured that Snoop cereal would not be available to consumers or that it would incur exorbitant costs that would eliminate any profit to Brodus Foods. Essentially, because Snoop Dogg and Master P refused to snell or sell Snoop cereal in totality, Post entered a false arrangement where they could choke Brodus Foods out of the market, thereby preventing Snoop cereal from being sold or produced by any competitor. I mean, 
this seems like decent allegations. Um, the most egregious example of post bad faith dealings is the treatment of Snoop cereal at Walmart. Snoop cereal was launched in Walmart stores in 2023, was an immediate success, but within a few months, customers could not locate it in the aisles of their Walmart store. Many Walmart stores showed online and in the Walmart employees in-store application that uh, Snoop cereal was sold out or out of stock. However, upon further investigation by store employees, each of these stores had several boxes of Snoop cereal in their stock rooms that were coded to not be put out on the store shelves. Unlike the other post-branded boxes of cereal around them, these Snoop cereal boxes had been in the stock rooms for months without ever being made available to customers. Okay, that is... Like, this to me seems like a, a clear breach of contract, bad faith negotiation claim. So... I'm, I, yeah, I, I mean, these are all superficial. These are conclusory. So I'm waiting to see what their sort of prima facie basis for believing the post is behind this. Yeah, and this this will be interesting to see. Uh, post essentially worked with Walmart. I mean, these are... We're, I'm going to want to see some evidence beyond just like the, the notions, but um, worked with Walmart to ensure that none of the boxes of Snoop cereal would ever appear on the store shelves. This automatically resulted in losses to the product, which cut into the profits that Broda's Foods was supposed to receive from the agreement. Um, guys, if you have never um, looked into what it is like making a product, um, you get screwed. So let's say you make people are like, why don't you put your your hot sauce into um, like, you know, at Walmart? Well, first, mm -hmm. I don't have the manufacturing capacity, but let's assume I did. Let's assume I sell Walmart a hundred thousand units of my hot sauce. I don't get paid until those sell, basically. Um, and this isn't like I'm using Walmart as a hypothetical example. I don't know Walmart specific policies, but um, uh, typically if there's any like waste product, like if there's any product they can't sell, they'll throw it out and then demand a, a return from you. Um, this is how like the software industry works. This is how various other things work. This is, um, yeah. Um, so... And there's various ways that you might have to pay for like shelf placement and various other things. So if you have product that's not actually getting sold, you can end up getting absolutely flattened. Um, so, yeah. So these actions have shown uh, that Post intended all along to get rid of their competition by entering into lip service agreements and causing Snoop Serial to operate at a loss. I'm wondering where they are going to connect posts or like Walmart's activities to post and where they're going to get intent out of posts activities. Right. I'm still, I'm still waiting. Yeah. I mean, this is introduction. It's all very conclusory, but I'm like, yeah, how, what is your basis for believing any of these things? So post and Walmart have now turned around and claimed that Broda's foods is responsible for vague chargebacks and expenses incurred because the products did not sell. Yet when Snoop cereal is in the cereal aisle of stores, customers buy it. The only reason Snoop cereal would not sell is because Post and Walmart intentionally kept it from reaching the market. That's going to be disputed. Um, mm -hmm. This underhanded dealing by defendants cannot be accepted. If Post and Walmart are able to do this to popular businessmen such as Snoop Dogg and Master P., they, they definitely will do it to the mom and pop and minority owned companies who do not have the ability to defend themselves. You're trying to make it a big social cause, but yeah. Thus, Brodus Foods brings this suit to take a stand against defendants for their diabolical actions. Diabolical. It's, it's a little overwrought there, man. Maybe tone it down just one step. Yeah, I'm like, you're at a nine. I need you at like a six. Um, um, Brodus Foods seeks to hold defendants accountable and to preserve Snoop Dogg and Master P's dreams of creating a legacy for their families, adding diversity to the food industry, and giving back to their community. Um, parties. Brodus Foods is a California entity. Uh, Post is a Delaware entity. Gee, I, that's a surprise. 
A Delaware incorporation? Why would anybody ever do that? I never heard of such a thing. Wow. Um, so Post Foods is a Delaware entity at home in Minnesota. Um, so once again, Delaware. Walmart is a Delaware entity. Wow. Shocking. Jurisdiction and venue. Venue is proper in Dakota County under Minnesota statute because Post resides in this county. And so all are part of the cause of action arose within Dakota County. Seems reasonable to me. Facts. All right. So here's the facts that they're claiming. History of Broda's Foods. Um, food industry, with its many subparts, has lacked diversity in its ranks by predominantly excluding the presence of minority-owned businesses or brands. I mean, just about everything you see on the shelves comes down to what, like four or five different brands, like four or five different major companies that yep. then have. So, I mean, sure, it lacks diversity. There's like five companies. So, yeah, the few minority owned businesses or brands that attempted to break through the industry ranks would typically be pushed out of the market by the bigger players which discouraged the minority community from seeking out opportunities and taking chances in starting their own brands or businesses. This isn't because they're minority owned. This is because they're competition. Fair enough. Yeah, for sure. Like if I started a cereal right now as a white guy and was successful with the cereal, they'd be doing everything to shut down the cereal. Not because they are worried about the color of my skin, but because they're worried about the color of their, of the money. So, um, yep. Kelly Shore is saying UK girl. Why is Delaware uh, not a shock? Um, Delaware aims to be very corporation friendly. They aim to be a place where companies want to incorporate and lots and lots and lots of companies are incorporated in Delaware. Um, mm -hmm. Seeing this lack of diversity, Snoop Dogg and Master P founded Broda's Foods to carry on Snoop Dogg's mother's legacy, Mama Snoop, of loving and supporting their communities by feeding families in need while also providing inspiration to the minority community to start their own companies and brands. Uh, bullshit. Um, <laughs> guys, you wanted to start a cereal company because you thought it would make some money. Just, like, square up. Like, this is not... So Snoop Dogg and Master P hoped that Broda's Foods would empower minorities to seek out economic opportunities through business and brand ownership while also opening the food industry to other minority-owned companies and brands. <laughs> Bullshit. Um, I don't think that they actually care about that at all. It's This is they're hoping to make some money, right? Um, Snoop Dogg and Master P hope to preserve Broda's Foods as a legacy to their families. Yes, so that their kids and grandkids can have a business to hold on to and develop to create generational wealth. That, I believe. Um, Broda's Foods also has at its forefront the goal of making a difference in their community by providing affordable food to those who cannot afford to pay the higher prices of similar products. Um, I suspect that's more just their market positioning. Same thing with the hunger and homelessness. I mean, it's good marketing. I don't know that that's actually... Like, I don't know that I actually believe in the uh, the charitable interests here. You're skeptical? I am skeptical. Uh, Snoop cereal contains three flavors, including fruity hoops with marshmallows, frosted drizzlers, and cinnamon toasties. Each flavor is branded with iconic cartoon characters who teach kids valuable life lessons while they enjoy their breakfast. What are the valuable life lessons? Like you beat me, you beat me to it. <laughs> yeah. Valuable life lessons. Sugar is an important source of diabetes, kids. <laughs> like I, I don't get it. Um, Snoop cereal. Apparently, apparently the, the the life lesson might be Boston yummy for the tummy. Apparently so. <laughs> um, okay. Um, uh, I got some. So when placed before focus groups in the public, it was apparent that Snoop cereal would be a success. Um, how high were the focus groups? Because. Um, Dude, don't even get started. Yeah. 
Uh, when Snoop cereal was actually available in stores in a visible location, the store would or the cereal would sell out very quickly. They enjoyed the flavor and quality. Here we've got two reviews. I hate this tendency in lawsuits. You see this in the Gina Carano lawsuit as well, where it's like, yeah. here are some random jackasses on Twitter. Here it's here are some random jackasses on um, you know, giving reviews. It's like Walmart's, okay, cool. Walmart service, I guess. Um, what is only, this mean? Only, only one of whom is a verified purchaser, I'd like to note. Yeah, I just like I don't understand. Um but I love this product. Um, it was bussin', as my kids would say, and it's made by Snoop Dogg. Um, That's a fake review. It, it might be. I don't know. Okay. Uh, the positive words on the back of the box are encouraging and good for children. Okay. Um, what are the positive words? Oh, hey, there's on more the reviews. Box? So we got at least 10 people who like this cereal. Um, and fruity right. hoops, we're gonna see at least uh, you know, 10 people who like this cereal as well. Um, Amazon reviews the cereal is meant to be affordably priced and available in stores across the nation, including Walmart. Unfortunately, as shown below, defendants have hiked the price of a single box of Snoop cereal to exorbitant prices and intentionally hindered its sale to the public to force Brodus Foods off the market. What are exorbitant prices? That'll be interesting. So uh, they brought it to post. They said, hey, we want to sell like we want to sell this. Um, they represent themselves as an expert in the industry, including in the sale, marketing, manufacture and distributing of third party branded food products. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't want to partner with them. They wanted to purchase Snoop in yeah, its entirety. We've read, we've read this and we're and we're walking and we're walking. Walk, get like, me something new. They said that there was going to be facts. Where's the facts? Um where is the facts in this? We had an agreement where agreement was that they do stuff for us. It was going to be launched. Okay, next. 50-50 split. Sure. Next. Okay. Right, fine. Next. Uh, wrongful acts. Um, people liked people our cereal. Found it, people liked it. They found it was sold out. Um, rapidly learned that... Um, so they heard from customers, apparently, that many of the stores had product on hand but didn't place it on the shelves. Okay, um, I don't believe this in paragraph 50. The joint venture results in each store being told exactly where to put each cereal brand down to the nearest millimeter. I don't I, think that Walmart is measuring it to the millimeter. I don't think it's to the millimeter, but I do think that they do track where each box goes because you pay for those positions. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, if you want your stuff to be eye level instead of like ankle level, you pay the money, you I pay the that. dollars. So, um, so I'd I do believe that there is some payment on that. Um, yeah, I love, I know what I'd love to know the difference between 0 0.900 meters and 0 0.901 meters. Yeah, I'm, uh, I just don't know, right. Um, they can also code each box as having no location, which means that it'll remain in the back of the stock room because it was not provided on the store uh, store floor. After several months of remaining in the back, those boxes will be thrown out or sold at significant discount on clearance. So um, for Post to have fulfilled its obligation, it would have had to purchase shelf space for the Snoop cereal on the cereal aisle of Walmart stores. But they're saying that it didn't. Um, when scanned, the employees told the customers that the boxes were listed as no location provided. This they're going to need. I assume later we're going to see some affidavit of cu a customer who says, I tried to do this. Um, customers posted online, which would be hearsay, which is not going to be useful to them. Um, for example, 2023, a customer entered a Walmart store, asked where he could get some Snoop cereal. They said they didn't have it in the back. When the customer went into the back of the stock room with the store manager, how the fuck do you do that? We're four minutes over, folks. I, I'm good. Uh, we're in spicy time. How the fuck do you do that? Um, how do you go into the back with the store manager? And uh, we've got uh, Punk and Pinoy saying, I work in retail space planning. We do specify positions to the millimeter. 
compliance is a different issue, but given how tightly stuff is packed, it's usually pretty close. I, I, I the reason I was doubtful is because in my time I've been into many a Walmart, and I have to say, it does not appear to my eye that those products are placed with millimeter level precision. I suspect that they are <laughs> planned with minimi, millimeter level precision yeah. and placed with. I don't know. I just work here level position. <laughs> so, yeah. um, but they apparently found a bunch of cereal not put out on the shelves. Um, similar experience in September, 2023. Um, but the employees found a whole bunch that had been sitting there for over six weeks. Um, picture of Walmart application showing that cinnamon toasties were out of stock. Store one, Walmart, Pennsylvania toasties. Cinnamon toasties for the Snoop cereal. Wait, so am I to believe that not only was some random customer lent to the back room, but this random customer is also just happening to take photos of the display of the Walmart employee and the stuff on the back room just for the hell of it? There's one of two possibilities here. Possibility one, this dude is an influencer doing a TikTok. That's possibility number one. Possibility number two, this customer works for Snoop. Mm. Um, those are my my thoughts on that. Mm. Um, so once again, more fruity hoops with marshmallows that they took a picture of. I am thinking that this this looks like they sent their own investigators. Um, yeah, this is fruity hoops, um, where it looks like they're looking through. I worked um, retail. I yeah. T Lisa says, "Tell me you never worked retail without telling me." I worked retail. I worked retail. Harris Teeter, Big Lots. Oh my word! I did inventory. I did. I had to check each individual bale of yarn in the big bales to make sure they're all <laughs> priced right. You don't tell me. I was there. <laughs> I worked in the. I worked in the back room. I stocked shelves. <coughs> I was yeah. There. Or or disgruntled employees. That is also yeah. a possibility. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> somebody took a picture of the label of the cinnamon toasties. This to me sounds like an investigator. Um, so, um, you've got like a picture of the thing saying, you know, and of course it's potato quality, but then no location written on the box. That's interesting. Um, so images showing a box of Snoop cereal that is written on the box, no location. So um, for locations that did put it on the store floor, they didn't put it in the cereal aisle, but put them in the baby section, in clearance uh, section, selling them for pennies on the dollar and on aisles where no one would look for cereal. Okay. Uh, many Walmart employees and store managers stated that they were not given the option to sell Snoop cereal at their store as the position on the shelves was a decision made by Walmart corporate headquarters. How do you get to this being from post, though? I mean, Walmart is named, but how do you get... Walmart is named, but Walmart doesn't owe Snoop Dogg sh shit, right. right? Yeah, exactly. Like, um, if I was running a grocery store I and Kurt had... I don't know, Kurt cereal. I don't have to put Kurt's stuff on the shelves. Oh, yes. And uh, Dr. Moo has a GoFundMe. Um, if somebody could drop a link in the chat, that would be good. But check that out. Dr. Moo is in uh, litigation to try to get Dr. Moo's uh, kid back. So um, check that out. Uncivil cereal is made with 100% beef fish and is a part of this complete breakfast. <laughs> so, I mean, they're suing Walmart, but I don't see where Walmart owes them any duty. Um, Walmart hiked the price of Snoop cereal to over $10 a box, which goes directly against Broda's Foods' goal of providing affordable food. Ten forty-seven dollars for a box of cereal. And listed as out of stock. Now, I'm willing to bet that the number seven as the last digit is significant because I know it's significant, for example, at uh, Costco where all the numbers end in nine unless they're trying to designate it as something else. So the last digit 
is used as an indicator of its status. And seven other, sounds like it's a status indicator. The other thing that you see, and somebody says that this is... No, this is the Walmart page. Um, it could still be a drop shipper because people do that on Walmart too, just like they do Amazon. Oh, really? I didn't know that yeah. Walmart allowed that. Um, yeah. The other thing that you get is um, uh, some pricing systems automatically will do something where something when something is running low on stock or is out of stock, they'll throw the price way high. And so there was this thing on Wish a while back where people were like, you can buy a child on Wish because why is this like shelf going for $50,000? And it's like the shelf is going for $50,000 because they're out of that shelf and their pricing system just automatically throws an insane price on it just when they're out of it. Um, so, yeah. Wait, for $50,000, says... we will find you one. Yeah, for fifty thousand dollars, we'll run one off. Just uh, and, yeah, and apparently that was Wayfair. It it was the dumbest controversy ever. But you know, yeah. And there um, was the time when the Amazon bots were in the pricing war, and the book wound up to be like three quintillion dollars or something. Because <laughs> the one the one person had the his bot to set it at ninety five percent of the price, and the other person had his bot to set it at like one hundred five percent because the book the book didn't exist, so they just kept rising the price over and over and over again. Yeah. That's, yeah. That is awesome. Um, so despite Walmart and Post's bad faith, defendants claim that Brota's Foods was responsible for uh, vague chargebacks. So they say that was solely caused by their own, um, you know, own actions. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have an important breaking news announcement mm. from, uh, from a certain Rob. Uh, exactly. Uh, give me one second. I got to pull this up because it is, um, it is essential. So let's just, um, I'm going to have to pull this down in order to present this. Uh, where is it? There we go. So uh, this is Leo. Leo apparently got his first pup cup. Mm. Hence the uh, <laughs> smattering of goo. Um, so Rob wanted everyone to know Leo has got the first pup cup. And look at that face going. That was the best thing ever. I love you so much. Where is the second? Where is the next one? So, uh, yeah, people are saying what is uh, what is on the uh, the dog's face? That is, um, I guess, whipped cream from Starbucks. So and as long as we're uh, appreciating, I've shown this before on my own channel, but this is the pen that Rob gave me. Ooh. It's wonderfully, wonderfully milled case, by the way. Just I really like that. Just this nice little case he gave me here. It's very, very cool. Can and we see the pen? Yes, we can. Of course. Then we got this wonderful pen in purple here. Ooh, that purple. is a very nice pen. Oop. Purple. Like a uh, diamond pattern there. They get a little rifle there for the pen clip. <laughs> That's cool. That is little awesome. Bolt, little bolt there on the end. Very, very nice. Thank you, Rob. Uh, Kristen M96 is saying, did I get my pen? I did get a pen. I've, uh, I'll have to show it off at some point. It's in the other room, so I'm, I can't go grab it right off. But, uh, so, um, they're saying it's improper to assert a chargeback for a product selling on clearance when the only reason it was on clearance is because you didn't put it on the shelves. Um, so post breakdown they say it shows exorbitant costs and allowances um basically it says we di they didn't make any money um where is the actual evidence of of post like i want some evidence of post 
There's nothing here. There's no There's evidence here. on post. No. So this, I mean, this should be dismissed. If, this should be dismissed. There is all you you. There is nothing but conclusions. I have to accept just, your facts. I have to fact your. I have to accept facts as true. But you have no facts. You have just allegations. Are you just a conclusion? Claim. If it failure to state a claim, yeah, no. Go um, I mean, maybe they can file an affidavit in a hurry and get something in there. But uh, I mean, yeah. they just don't have any evidence that connects this to post, other than just guesses. Um, yeah. Breach of implied covenant of good faith and fair dealing. So basically, when you make a contract with somebody, there are like there's an implied agreement that you're not going to fuck them. Um, so, um, and I don't mean like that, but I mean, like, let's say that I make a deal with Kurt, right? And I am going to, um, I'm going to make Kurt branded, um, toaster ovens. And then after I do that, I intentionally make the Kurt branded toaster ovens really expensive and I sell a very similar toaster oven for very cheap. You know, it's like that would be considered maybe a breach of the implied covenant of good faith and fair dealing because I'm just making the deal to keep Kurt from competing with my toaster ovens. Um, and toaster ovens could be basically anything here. Mm -hmm. Widgets. So, yeah, widgets. Uh, so, Enforceable contract. Um, breach this duty by hindering the sales. You got no evidence, though. You got no... You don't yeah. have any... Um, you don't have any actual... Facts on this. I mean, um, you've shown you've shown that Walmart did stuff, but how are you connecting this to Post? What did Post do? How do you know they did it? Yeah, what did Post do? How do you know they did it? Like what, what evidence do you expect to bring? Like, you don't have to bring the evidence at this stage, but you have to tell us what your case is. Um, yeah. You so have to give me, you have to give me facts that make this possible. How do you know what they did? Uh, they're arguing fiduciary duties because they were partners in this arrangement. Um, yeah, they'd be, they'd be right, but they don't have a case. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah but you have to actually show that they did a thing. And the problem with the, like a failure to state a claim here is that um, they might be able to prove this if they get to discovery, because if you get all of the uh, post emails, it yeah. might, it might confirm this. You're not the gonna problem get to discovery. is they yeah. don't get to discovery on this. I don't think yeah. Yeah, uh, you're going to get dismissed right out the gate. You can't get to discovery. I suspect what we'll see is a dismissal with leave to refile. Yeah. And if they can't fix it, then we'll just see a dismissal with prejudice following by that. Yeah. Um, but you can't just use discovery as a fishing trip. Like I can't, yeah. I can't sue Kurt and just say, Kurt had a conspiracy to harm me. And I have no evidence of this at all just in order to look through Kurt's emails in order to maybe find it, um, the, the court's going to be like, no, you don't get to go fishing for that, right? No um, beef fish. Yeah. So, fiduciary duty, failed to act, um, you know, in their best interests, didn't provide the same level of distribution and agreements. Um, allowing it to rot in the back and then be sold for pennies on the dollar. Um, what did other companies do? Like, was it just Walmart that didn't sell it? Because they listed a bunch of other companies, right? Um, and it's at least hypothetically possible that even if Post didn't put it on the shelves. It wasn't necessarily out of malice, but that we'd have to go to the contract to see what they sort of guaranteed in terms of that. You know, what, what guarantees did they make about shelf space or anything else? If yeah. it's just like, if it's just like best efforts, then the mayor's not, not even a breach there. Breach of contract fraud. Um, no. falsely represented. I don't think they're going to make out fraud here. 
Um, you, 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 can't, you can't make up fraud because fraud has to be pled with specificity. And you don't even have enough for general. Yeah, so mo in the United States, most most causes of action, we just need notice. We just need notice pleading, but fraud, you don't. You need specific pleading, so you can't make out a fraud allegation. I don't. I, I don't think fraud's gonna stand no, here. Not, not chance. Um, negligent misrepresentation. Mm, okay. So representing the post would enter into contracts with major retailers, including Walmart, to place it on the store shelves. Okay, fair enough. Um, so uh, tortious interference with contract and business relationships. Um, Walmart was aware of the agreement between Brodus Foods and Post. How would they know um, that? I don't know. Well, they haven't pled any facts that they were. Um Walmart was aware that this agreement was valid and required Post to distribute and sell Snoop cereal. I wouldn't know that either. It was aware that they were obligated to bring it to the market, entered into an agreement, intentionally interfered with the agreement uh, by refusing to play Snoop cereal. So now they're saying that Walmart violated the agreement, like that Walmart was um, conspiring against... Um, yeah, uh against post take take your lawsuit back and try again uh this is gonna be rough walmart intentionally chose not to provide a location and intentionally chose to show that it was out of stock so now they're saying walmart was against them collusion and conspiracy um okay i guess maybe um, it's the same claims, uh, aiding and abetting a breach of a fiduciary duty for Walmart. So they're saying Walmart knew post was a fiduciary and helped post breach it. Um, so they're suing for more than $50,000 for expectancy damages, actual damages, lost profits, disgorgement of profits, costs of marketing and other expenditures, specific performance. They're not going to get specific performance, lost opportunities, lost reputation, legal costs and attorney's fees, and punitive Wait damages. A so, what do you mean more than fifty thousand dollars? This doesn't make sense. Why doesn't it make sense? Because you're in federal court, right? This is yep. a federal. So your only two bases for suing are federal cause of action, and I didn't see any of those because it's all breach of contract, right? And your only other basis is diversity, and you need more than seventy-five thousand uh, dollars. No, it's district court. In the uh, state of Minnesota, like district court. Okay, never yeah. mind. Fair enough. Yeah. No, they're uh, they're never fine. Mind. All right. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, so expectancy damages are places where a contract would have given you a certain amount of money, and you don't have it. So let's say I agree to sell Kurt. Uh, 100,000 kilograms of gold at That's a particular a price. He's going to buy a ton of gold. And, you know, I sell, agree to sell it to him at the spot price of gold. And then the price of gold, you know, and I'm going to provide it to him uh, next month. Mm -hmm. Between now and next month, the price of gold doubles. Mm -hmm. And I tell Kurt, it's... I don't want to sell it to you anymore. Mm -hmm. Kurt you're, can you're, then... You're, you're screwed. Yeah, Kurt will come back and sue me and say, I want the the money I would have made if I'd bought the gold at that price that we agreed on and then sold it at the current price, which is really high. I would have made those expectancy damages. Therefore, give me the money. Yeah, it's um, just a futures contract. We're both taking it. We're both taking a bet. Yeah. And in this case, I lose and then I can't get out of it you know, the court will enforce that. So um, actual damages is like, it's what it sounds like, actual costs. Mm -hmm. uh, lost profits is money they thought they would have made. Disgorgement of profits is, uh, disgorgement is an interesting remedy because it basically says, you made money by breaching my rights. Mm -hmm. Give me Give the money. Me the money. Uh, yeah. And where this comes up is, all the time it comes up in copyright or patent issues. 
And Kurt's a patent. Like, Kurt has done a lot of patent stuff. So You better believe it. Um, let's say I have a patent on a widget. And Kurt goes, F your patent, and makes a product based on that patent. He's mm -hmm. He sells a million of them. Mm -hmm. And he makes a hojillion dollars. Mm -hmm. I can be like, that's my money, though. Give me that money that you made improperly using my patent. Turn it over. And the court mm -hmm. will probably say, yeah, absolutely. Yep. Um, cost of marketing and other expenditures. I think that's just another form of actual damages. Specific performance means you have to do an actual thing. And specific performance is a very rare remedy. Yeah, that's hard. Uh, so, um, act, like specific performance as an example, let's say I am going to buy a car from Kurt. And mm -hmm. Kurt decides, I'm not selling you the car. Mm -hmm. Normally, what I can sue Kurt for is the value of the car, or at least the difference in value of the car from mm -hmm. what I was going to pay him. Mm -hmm. But sometimes that's not going to be considered good enough. Sometimes the court will say, you have to turn over the actual car. The actual and, thing. And the circumstances where they might do that are situations where, like, Let's say this is not just like a Honda Civic, mm -hmm. but this is the specific Aston Martin that was used in one of the Bond films. There you go. Because it's irreplaceable. It's yeah, an irreplaceable, go. unique object. Um, this can happen with like special gemstones. Mm -hmm. Like if I was buying the Hope Diamond. Well, let's let's give let's give a question to the chat because there is one kind of contract where specific performance is almost guaranteed. You where you can almost guarantee it. So specific performance is where I can demand you give me the thing. So, and as Ian has said out, Ian has said, this is where, this is where I'm the thing is unique. <laughs> this is where the thing is unique and otherwise irreplaceable. So there is one <laughs> specific kind of contract in particular where specific <laughs> performance is almost guaranteed. It's a contract for what, chat? I think we got one answer in the chat. Have you seen uh -huh. it? Uh-huh. <laughs> I love this one. <laughs> That's illegal. <laughs> land, land was the correct answer. Real estate is the land. Is, is the yeah, correct real answer. estate, land. Yeah. 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 Because, because no particular piece of property is interchangeable with another piece of property. Yeah. Um, so there you go. They might, they might be similar, but yeah. There you go. Uh, Lost opportunities, that would just be actual damages. Lost reputation, again, actual damages. Legal costs and attorney's fees, okay. And punitive damages. I don't think they're going to get punitives on this. Even if they are, their suit doesn't get thrown out, I don't think they're getting punitives. No. Um, so, you can't get punitives on a contract. I mean, yeah, I mean, maybe on the torts, but on the underlying breach, you can't get, you can't get punitives in a breach of contract. Yeah, I'm just I'm trying to think of an exception because I could see like a really egregious breach, but most places represent or like acknowledge a doctrine called efficient breach. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Efficient it was economically, breach. It was economically efficient for us to breach, so we just paid the money because it was cheaper. Yep. Yeah. And um, so as an example of an efficient breach, um, I agree to sell Kurt uh, 20,000 widgets. And Kurt is going to spend $10,000 for each widget. And at the end of the day, he's going to make $11,000 reselling these widgets. Somebody else comes to me and they have a widget emergency. And that person comes to me and they say, I will give you $30,000 for each widget. The court, you know, and so I go to Kurt and I say, hey, I ain't giving you the widgets. Go F yourself. The court will say, listen, um, for each widget, I have to pay Kurt a thousand bucks. So he was going to get 20,000 widgets. He was going to make a thousand bucks off each of them. Kurt gets paid 20,000 bucks. 20,000 times a thousand, 20 million bucks. Thank you very much. Right. Yeah. So Kurt gets 20 million bucks, but I am making a, a lot more than 20 million bucks off this deal. And the court will just say, that is an efficient breach. Even though it was an intentional breach, 
I am specifically screwing Kurt over in this calculation. The twenty Kurt's... million dollars. That's not so bad. That's, you know. I mean, he's getting twenty screw, million dollars. If you want to screw me over and give me twenty million dollars, I think we can still be friends. But at the end of the day, um, like the court says, this is an efficient breach. This is, you know, and so they don't impose punitives because the court actually says that this is reasonable for me to do. This is what I should do. Because what the court says is the worst outcome is that I go to the $30,000 guy and say, you don't get any widgets and I'm selling them to Kurt. Because they might have some sort of widget emergency that, yeah. So I don't think they're getting their punitives. Um, so conditions precedent, all conditions precedent for plaintiff's performance have occurred prior to defendant's breaches. So that's just a timing thing. We want a jury. Um, so prayer for relief. We want at least 50,000 bucks. And um, that's from Ben Crump. Oh, give me a break. That's why it. That's, that's why, why that's why it's shit. That's well, why it's shit. And that's also why it says minority owned 72 times in this. Oh, no wonder it's a piece of shit. Oh, it's from Ben Crump. Okay. So Ben Crump is noted for like civil rights lawsuits, which vary dramatically in their value. And um Ben Crump often sort of pursues that kind of goal. I don't think this is like a I don't think that this is a minority rights issue case. And you know who else doesn't think it is? Ben freaking Crump, because he doesn't actually allege that his client was discriminated against in any way. Like, he doesn't say they discriminated against Snoop because they're racist, because they got nothing to say that, right? Yeah. Um, Post Serial does not care that Snoop is black. Post Serial cares a lot about money. And I can believe that they might have screwed Snoop out of money because they wanted the money. But uh, Ben Crump sort of has this style of how he does things, which is he, he, He's files, a these, he files these um, bombastic lawsuits alleging like wild claims and then like make settlements. Um, I'm not a huge fan of his work. Uh, some of his stuff, I mean, is good, good issues, but this, like that explains why he is running this angle. Um, that isn't to say that <sighs> I'm now worried that Snoop would be better served by a different lawyer. Mm. Like, um, that would be better served by a lawyer who wasn't like going the Trump. inflammatory route and instead was like, here's how we know post did the things. Um, yeah, I, I don't not a fan of this. Um, I think right now, I mean, my prediction right now is that they reject this with a, with leave to amend. Mm hmm. And either they amend it and we get a very different set of claims with some actual, like, you know, on this day, this employee, told, you know, told us that Post's reason for doing it was this, right? Like mm -hmm. something like, you know, along those, something other than just a bare assertion that Post are bad guys. Mm -hmm. um, something... You know, they told employee X that they would do this, right? They don't need to put it in an affidavit. They don't need to anything. They just need to allege actual facts and not just a conclusion. Um, so that's, yeah, I, I'm not thrilled with this lawsuit, although I think Snoop may actually be being screwed here. Um, so it's possible. I mean, something seems like it's gone wrong. But we don't have enough to implicate post automatically. I mean, this is the thing is I'm actually wondering if it wasn't like Walmart screwing up because um, if it was post, I would expect to see other claims here. Um, one of the claims I would expect to see here 
if it was post doing this is other companies other than Walmart also did not put Snoop cereal on the shelves. That's a good way to say, hey, we can. And I mean, that does tremendous stuff to support that it's post, right? To say it's like. A factor. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's not just one company, but post is also putting it up on this, you know, is also doing this at, you know, Target or, mm -hmm. you know, wherever. Um, Kroger, Amazon, right? Are these companies also delisting it? Because if they're not, then that suggests it's not post. It might be Walmart. And Walmart might have all sorts of reasons why they don't want to put it on the shelves. Um, Walmart is not what I would consider a brand known for, like a company known for um, um, sort of any sort of controversy mm -hmm. and like snoop is a rapper right snoop is um what is snoop known for marijuana drug use yeah like they could easily say hey listen um we don't want uh like we don't want to sell snoop cereal just because we think it's bad for our brand. Right. There you go. Um, so they could easily say, Hey, we think that this is terrible for our brand. Therefore um, we're not listing it. And that is a complete answer to the case. Very much like that. That ends it. So um I don't know. I don't think this lawsuit's going anywhere. That's my feeling. I could be wrong, but um, I don't think it's going anywhere. Um, so, oh, well, let us wrap up uh, a little bit here. Um, I'm running out of steam. I run out um, of steam. What is that? Uh, Mrs. Runkle has been very sick. And because she hasn't been sleeping with coughs and so forth, I haven't been sleeping. Um, and some people are saying, why did they buy it just so it sits in the uh, store sitting in the back room? That would be post having an agreement with, uh, with you know, and this is a conjecture, right? This is just a, a guess. Mm -hmm. But like if post has an agreement with Walmart that they're going to provide a whole bunch of stuff, um, then Walmart gets the stuff, but they don't have to sell it. Um, and so we got a follow-up picture. Uh, apparently, Leo has finally decided to go to sleep. So, um, Erica says, uh, but weed is good for their brand. Lots of weed smokers in the area. You should see the carts of junk food that go through Walmart checkouts. I can guarantee you the weed smokers do less business at Walmart then the non-weed smokers well then the moms who are just like doing their shopping for a family right yeah, fair. like you know the conservative mom with like six kids um is going through a lot more groceries than a weed smoker on his snack run and um it just it is what it is right um so I don't know. I there's a really interesting essay that um, is worth reading at some point, um, and it was put out or it's put out by uh, Bungie, Bungie Software, um, the guys who the same people who made Halo and a bunch of other things. Um, but this was back in the era of a game called Marathon, and. Um, Bungie basically noted a lot about the economics of making uh, computer games. And they noted things like you pay money to get your stuff on a shelf, but you also have to pay money for every copy that doesn't sell. And so, um, and uh yeah, the same Bungie that Hogan EDB talk about. I'm an old school Bungie fan. I was playing Bungie games back when they were 
uh, making a game called Pathways into Darkness, which um, not a lot of people have um, have played. Um, but so this whole thing about like, um, you know, how businesses run things, it's complicated and it's not as straightforward as people think. Like I've had people tell me, oh, you've got to get your hot sauce on, um, you know, on grocery store shelves. You have no idea how much of a hassle that that is, right? Um, there's a lot of money to be had in it, but I mean, I don't, I just don't know, right? It's not um, not viable at this stage. So um, we'll see. But yeah, I'm not super thrilled with this one. I'm not going to get into the Gina Carano lawsuit today. Um, maybe we'll go through it on Monday. Um, I'm also not going to, I don't know if I'll get into the Vince McMahon lawsuit at all. I've had some people ask me to cover it. Um, suffice to say Vince McMahon has been accused of some really gross stuff. Um, so yeah. All right. Let's cover some super chats and then uh, get some sleep. How common are perjury trials? Super rare. Super, super rare. Unheard of rare. Uh, it is super hard to prove perjury because in order to prove perjury, you have to prove not just a false statement, but an intentional false statement. And you know how hard that is? Um, like, let's say Kurt testifies to two different things mm -hmm. at a like at two different trials. I'm going to charge Kurt with perjury. Kurt gets up on the stand at his perjury trial and says, I... I effed up like I misremembered. My memory was screwy. Have I proven beyond a reasonable doubt that Kurt lied? Probably not. Like, it's real hard. Unless Kurt, like, specifically puts in writing, I lied at these trials. I'm going to have a hard time proving perjury. So, um, it's real hard to prove perjury. Uh, Melissa, I might cover it. We'll just, yeah. We'll uh, we'll look at it. Um, thanks for being respectfully in. Good word, try Kurt from Nikki Crayons. Um, I mean, I I really like Hawaii. Hawaii's a great place. I'm I'm conflicted because I know that politically, like tourists to Hawaii is a whole um, a whole controversial thing. So I don't know. I mean, I'd like to go visit Hawaii again, um, but I don't know. It's um, it's tough. Uh, covering Boone, Kurt, or Ian? I haven't been covering Boone so far. I don't know if I, I heard, will. I heard she got yet another new lawyer. So exciting. She's on to her eighth, apparently. Apparently a female lawyer now. I don't think she's going to be any happier with a female lawyer than she was with her male lawyers. But um, mm. yeah. Um, I was watching a little bit of this murder trial in New Hampshire uh, involving a young child. It was interesting. We were talking about that earlier. I just forgot. Oh, yeah. Is that the Montgomery so. one? Yeah. So never uh, mind. Can... Never mind. that's that's a good one. And guys, check out Kurt's channel. He's got a lot of great coverage. And um, when we get into you know constitutional issues like on this Hawaii case, yeah. we had a great one today with Oral React on the Trump ballot thing out of Colorado. Really interesting oral discussion. And it was really interesting some of the questions that were being fired from the bench. Justice Jackson was asking questions that sounded like they were coming from a right-wing justice. It was pretty interesting. So it's like, okay. So unexpected a little bit there. So interesting stuff. Check that one out, because I can tell you I'm not going to cover any of the Trump stuff for the simple reason that I will have 100%, um, like, it'll just be people going, shut up, Canadian. Um, like, so I'm just not, not touching that one, but... Uh, I may watch it just on my own. Burf 90, RE texting judge. What are the odds that she has ADD, ADHD, and retains what she hears better when she does two or three things at once? I know I do. Of course, that doesn't excuse the content of her text. If it had just been texting and that had been her argument, I would probably be in her corner. Like if all she'd been doing was just like, like let's say she was texting messages to like her friends going, hey, I'm at a trial. It's kind of boring you know, whatever else, or, 
she was on Facebook Marketplace, like looking at, you know, looking at buying a new shelf or something like that. I might be in her corner going, hey, so long as she's doing a decent job, where I go from eh to like get her off the bench is that further step of like mocking the prosecutor. And like a lot of what she was doing was tremendously sexist. Um, she was mm. mocking the prosecutor's dick size. Mm, yeah, I remember that. And the thing is, is we would never tolerate a judge who mocked a prosecutor's breast size, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, commented on a female prosecutor's legs. We would mm -hmm. never tolerate it. And so um, those aspects of like that sexist discrimination... I don't think we should tolerate it when it's a guy either, right? I mean, just let's have some standards. Um, and yes, this is the pink chair lawyers. She was making, um, she was making lawyers sit in these pink chairs for some the reason. Lawyer was? Yeah, I, I thought they were different people. No, same people, same person. Okay. She was making right. lawyers sit in these feet in these pink chairs, and it was exclusively male lawyers that then she uh, made. Um, and then when somebody commented on how it was exclusively male lawyers, I need a, I need a fridge near next to my desk. Can't live my life. I have a little um, like I don't have like a rack or anything. I should, um, but I've got a little. Um, what do you call it? Um, I've got a little like row of booze <laughs> just for, you know, I've been craving food. a beer for a while, but I was like, it's in the fridge and I don't necessarily want to get up because it seems rude. At some point, my goal, one of my goals is to knock my house down and to rebuild a new house. And one of the things I'm going to put in a, like a custom built house uh, would be um, like a, a streaming room. And that streaming room is going to include, ideally, a little mini fridge. Nice. Um, I'm thinking like a mini fridge and maybe like a wine something, just so I can be like, reach over, grab a boot, you know, grab a drink, grab a beer, grab a Coke, grab a whatever, and just uh, keep going. And yeah, she started to take pictures of women in the pink chairs just to show that she wasn't being sexist. She actually called somebody over on like an emergency basis to do that. So... Yeah, I I was not a fan of hers at all. So, um, yeah, I see go full size Phrygian. It's it's an idea. Um, it's kind of not a bad idea. I'm also wanting to make it like a gun room, so I'll be streaming and I can have like a wall of guns behind me, depending on how I turn the camera. Um, okay. so yeah. All right, let's uh, keep going here. Uh, L. Fliggins says, thanks for the supervisory entertainment. Thank you. Uh, Delaware Corporation, they didn't listen to Elon. Um, I don't think many people are going to listen to Elon on that one. Um, so, Lucentiel uh, says, taking sheet secret shopper to the next level. I suspect that is what was going on. Uh, please mention Dr. Moo's GoFundMe. Uh, love you, Ian. Um I mentioned Dr. Moo's GoFundMe. Somebody can throw it up in the chat again, a link. Um, so, yep, much appreciated. Uh, Matilda, good morning from the Netherlands, 4.55 a.m. Oh, that's an early morning. Good morning, Matilda. And I've never been to the Netherlands, but I'd love to. Um, Kristen M96, soup fun for Mrs. Runkle. Thank you so much. Uh, Joe Loy says, love to Mrs. Runkle. Uh, thank you. I will pass that along. Torin3 says, had a great day in the shop making fixtures. Have you picked out the two colors in addition to blue and white for the braid for next year's auction? I have not. Um, let me figure that out. So, um, yeah. Um, Nikki says, do I understand that you want to knock down your house so as to incorporate a mini fridge? What? I want to knock down my house so as to build a new house. Um, like, the goal is to build a new house to specifications. There's a... I, um, after World War II, the Canadian government pushed for a bunch of housing construction. Mm -hmm. And I live in one of those houses. Um, so it's a 1950s era house. 
Um, it has 1950s era design features and so forth. Um, there's all sorts of things I would love to do better. The location of my house um, is fantastic. Like I have an excellent location. So I want to keep the location. I just want a, a better house. So that is the goal. Um, and somebody says you could put a mini fridge in there right now. You have no idea how small this room is. So, um, yeah, uh, probably better built than today's houses. Yes and no. Um, so, uh, somebody says no basement. There is a basement, but it's in use. So, all right. Um, you don't have a hot sauce holder on your desk now. I'm shocked. I don't have a hot sauce holder in my, on my bed. Um, Misanthropic Anthropoids is glad to hear someone else has played Pathways into Darkness. Both it and Marathon were awesome games. Pathways into Darkness is one of my all-time favorite games. Um, Kurt, you play games, right? Mm -hmm. What's your favorite game of all times? Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. Oh, solid Fantasy choice. Final Fantasy IV. Um... Trying to think of other ones that I really, really love. Um, I really like three. So, um, Otterly Bell says, Good morning uh, from 5 20 a.m. Sweden. Feel better, Mrs. Runkle. I will pass that along. Um, yeah, at some point, we got to have a, a stream just talking about like which games we, we like. Um, but I'm going to let everyone in the chat go. Um, I think Kurt might also be fading fast here. So, um, let's roll the outro and, um, see you guys next time.